بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل لقطة من لساني يفقه قولي السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته How is everybody? Um, so I'm streaming live from Qatar this uh, evening 11 o'clock here in Qatar and it's um, it's an honor inshallah to uh, do this stream, host this stream actually it's the first time uh, I'm streaming directly from my uh, channel so Alhamdulillah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless, bless us. Um, I've got two very special guests to join the panel. Um, and as you can see from the title, to, tonight, inshallah, we will um, have an organic discussion uh, and talk about and explore and examine whether Mirza Ghulam Ahmed um, could have been suffering from a mental disorder. As you know, I'm a uh, consultant psychiatrist um, who graduated from uh, the University of Oxford trained in the UK and currently um, I'm working in, in Qatar. Um, so inshallah it should be a very beneficial stream. Um, I have done a couple of short videos uh, looking at uh, this issue. Um, so without further ado, I will uh, inshallah introduce you to my, my brother uh, Bashir. Assalamu alaikum. Brother Bashir. Uh, wa alaikum salam, brother. Thanks for having me. Jazakallah khair and welcome, uh, brother. Um, it's an honor, like I'm, I was mentioning, actually, this is the first time I've uh, streamed directly from my channel. Uh, so, mashallah, you have the, the honor and the pleasure of uh, being the first guest. I usually get invited to other people's uh, streams. So, Jazakallah khair. Um, and you reached out to me uh, and uh, you wanted to do a stream. Uh, mashallah, you're doing amazing work. So, recently, it's been quite topical, as you know. Uh, mashallah, uh, brother Adnan Rashid has been uh, doing amazing work. Uh, there's been a couple of brilliant streams. I think you've been a guest on a couple of them as well. So um, could you please just give uh, a bit of background because there may be people on the stream that don't know about you um, and that'd be really good, inshallah. <clears throat> sure, yeah. Um, so my name is uh, Dr. Bashir Ahmed Shah, but I'm not a medical doctor. I have a doctorate in education um, and an MBA and my undergraduate's aeronautical engineering etc. I'm a veteran of the U.S. Air Force, currently working as an academic college professor. I teach accounting and business, um, and I also teach baseball because <laughs> uh, I'm a youth coach. You know, uh, actually, I enjoy that more than anything else, you know, and, and, and also I, I, I have the blog, Amity of Fact Check blog, where I've, I've found all these references for everyone. It's like taking an online class to learn yes. about um, Kadianism and etc. I'm in California. In the USA, uh, yeah, brother, I'm in like my 40s, so yeah, that, that's it. <laughs> mashallah, mashallah. Jazakallah khair. And I think you have quite a unique uh, story because obviously you used to be Ahmadi and now you've got, uh, you've, you've been, Allah guided you to the to the truth. So mashallah, you have a good, good knowledge and uh, we'll pick your brain. So I think we're going to have like a bit of an organic discussion today, tonight. And um, you, you asked uh, a, a friend of yours, a colleague to also join us. So inshallah, I'll add him now. Bismillah. Assalamu alaikum, Dr. Sayyid. Wa alaikum as -salam. Thank you for Jazak inviting me. Jazakallah khair for joining us. Um, like Bashir, could you just give us a bit of introduction and background about yourself? Uh, that'd be really helpful. Hi, I'm a clinician scientist. Uh, my yes. basic, I've graduated from United Kingdom. I trained in United Kingdom and I also trained in United States of America. And I've got three doctorates, all related to medicine. Mashallah. And one of them is the Doctor of Philosophy from University of London. MashaAllah. Zakallah khair. Thank you so much. Um, okay. So, um, yeah, uh, like I was mentioning, um, we will try and uh, have a discussion today. And I think we'll, we'll invite people to come and join as well and, and, and have a robust discussion. Um, Ahmadis are welcome. Uh, I think uh, the intention is really to, inshallah, uh, wish the best for our Ahmadi brothers because there are, as you know, Bashir, there's a lot of sincere brothers, but they're misguided. Um, and I think the whole purpose of this is not to attack or, you know, be derogatory to, to the Ahmadis, uh, but inshallah to educate them and to kind of highlight, you know, the issues they ha have and inshallah make dua that Allah guides them. Uh, I don't know if you want to add anything uh, about that. No, you're right. That is the goal. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm just, there's a, a PowerPoint presentation, um, just basic uh, mental health and psychiatric diagnoses and 
symptomatology. So I'll just briefly present that. And then I'll, I'll uh, ask yourself and Dr. Sayed, because you've obviously reviewed the literature that Mirza has written uh, and some of the stuff about his mental state. Um, so we'll, we'll kind of discuss that, if that's okay. So Bismillah, let's see if we can share this. Okay. Just bear with me. Can you see my screen? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I can. Yeah. Okay. Jazakallah khair. So, um, yeah. So I'm a psychiatrist, like I mentioned. And this is something that I did actually about two months ago on a stream with uh, Hamza Wyatt Ham at Hamza's Den, um, where we actually spent three or four hours uh, going through mental illness, mental disorder, epilepsy, um, and demonstrating that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu uh, could not have been suffering from mental illness because this is something uh, which is uh, an allegation that Christians and atheists make towards uh, the Prophet So we'll use the same methodology, inshallah, to examine uh, Mirza's uh, mental state and any symptoms that he may have had. Okay, so the two uh, commonest diagnoses that um, alleged, and maybe we can discuss this about Mirza, is uh, psychosis um, and epilepsy, okay? Um, so what is uh, mental disorder? In terms of definition, it's very important to define what, what it is. Um, so a mental disorder is basically a behavioral or psychological syndrome or pattern that occurs in an individual, and it reflects an underlying psychobiological dysfunction. So that what that means is basically dysfunction in the biology and their psychology. And the consequences of this are clinically significant distress. So that may be a, a symptom or a disability, okay? Uh, and it should not be just basically a response to a common stress. So like, you know, if you lose a loved one, it's normal to have a grief reaction. So it shouldn't be that. And it should be a result of social deviance or conflicts with society. And what's really important is in terms of diagnosing mental disorder, it should have a, a, an impairment in your functioning. So what that means is that it should affect your, you know, your, your ability to relate to others, whether that's in terms of employment or your social relationships. Okay. Um, so we use two diagnostic classifications in psychiatry or in mental health. One is the ICD, which is produced by the World Health Organization, and we're currently on version 11. And then in America, or the American uh, Psychiatric Association uses the DSM, which is the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, and we're on version 5 right now. Okay. So um, in terms of uh, psychosis, what is psychosis? Basically, it's a, a disconnection from reality. Okay. Um, and it can result in people having false beliefs, so that's a delusion, or experiencing things that are, are not real. And it isn't a condition, but it's a term that describes a collection of symptoms. Um, and there's two important types of psychosis in terms of symptomatology. One is hallucinations. I think many people have heard of that. This is when parts of your brain basically mistakenly act like they would if your senses, vision, hearing, touch, smell, and taste, pick up on something that's actually happening. So typically, you know, you, you, you hear about uh, people with schizophrenia, um, you know, hearing voices, telling them to, commanding them to harm themselves or harm other people, commenting on what they're doing. And then you have delusions, uh, which are basically fixed false beliefs, um, which, which conflict with reality. And I think, um, obviously, we'll go into it, but probably Mirza, I would probably say that he may have been suffering from delusions when he started making claims about divinity and started making, you know, other absurd claims about being Isa alayhi salam and Muhammad and Krishna and these kind of things. So that, that that's something that we can discuss whether he these were delusions or whether it was intentionally that he was lying. You know, uh, that's also a possibility. Um, so who develops psychosis? Well, it's difficult to know the number of people who experience psychosis. Um, and in terms of the research, uh, around fifteen to hundred people out of hundred thousand develop psychosis each year. It usually begins in young adulthood when a person is in their late teens to mid twenties. Uh, however, it can ha happen at a younger age or an older age. So what are the signs and symptoms? Okay, So people can become suspicious, they can become paranoid um, and become have interpersonal conflict. Their speech can become incoher incoherent. That can be speech, also written speech as well. Um, they can be withdrawn socially. 
Uh, they may have unusual ideas, strange feelings, or a lack of feelings. Uh, they may have difficulty telling uh, what's real from fantasy, have issues with re regulating their emotions, suffer from anxiety, lack of motivation, and uh, functioning uh, problems. So what causes uh, psychosis? So psychosis is a general term. And then within that, you have things like schizophrenia, some things like delusional disorder, schizoaffective disorder. So these are all types uh, or causes of a, a psychotic illness. You can also have major depression, uh, which becomes severe, and you can develop psychotic symptoms and bipolar disorder. Um, another thing which, I, Bashir, I'd like to explore with you as well is uh, substance use. So um, I'm actually working within a substance use uh, hospital here in Qatar, and that can lead to a psychotic illness as well. So I think I've read uh, places that there's a question mark whether Mirza was uh, abusing you know, opioids. Uh, that's something that we can discuss as well, inshallah. Um, okay, so this is Kurt Schneider. Uh, he's a basically very important figure in psychiatry. He developed uh, what's called uh, Schneider's first rank symptoms. And these are symptoms that suggest somebody has a schizophrenic illness. Um, and I'm not going to go too much into this because it's very technical, but basically uh, an individual with hallucinations and delusions um, have can be diagnosed with that. So you have things like voices arguing amongst themselves, voices commenting on one's actions, issues with like, so you believe that somebody's controlling your thoughts, somebody can insert thoughts in your brain and remove it. Uh, and you can have delusional perception, basically where normal perception has a private and illogical meaning. There's a different types of schizophrenia. I don't, I don't think that's helpful really to go into that. Okay, so this is a, a diagrammatic uh, illustration of the different types of symptoms. So we divide symptoms into positive, negative, and cognitive, okay? So positive symptoms are like hallucinations, delusions, disorganized behavior and speech. Negative symptoms are things like uh, losing energy, uh, losing you know, enjoyment in activities, issues with speech. And then cognitive symptoms are like thought disorders, bizarre behavior as well, okay? Um, yeah, so this is, again, so you have, they can have issues with their speech, a lack of motivation, and issues with uh, interpersonal uh, relationships. Um, this is something called a uh, word salad. So um, the writing can demonstrate that somebody's suffering from a psychotic illness because of the way the words are arranged. And the speech of a person with schizophrenia often follows grammatical rules, but the content makes little sense. Okay. Um, so these are the different types. I don't think we need to go into that. Um, so this is an example, actually. This is dementia, preco, and paraphrenia. This is original writing um, in 1919. So Emil Kreplin, again, a, a very important figure in modern in psychiatry. So this, this is writing of somebody suffering from uh, schizophrenia. Okay. So I think at this point, I will stop sharing. And okay. Oh, mashallah, we have a, a cat. <laughs> okay, um, so Bashir and Dr. Sayyid, um, let's, uh, let's have a discussion, inshallah. Sure, and I, I'm going to pass it over to uh, uh, Dr. Sayyid, the Holy Spirit. Feel free to start, sir. Assalamu alaikum. Can you hear me? Yes, wa alaikum salam, Dr. Sayyid. Uh, I would like to mention a few things. Yes, please. Uh, and uh, I did actually a series of uh, presentations in the past on YouTube channel. It's called Akka Kabula. And I read one whole thesis. There are few people who have done PhD on Qadiyani, an MDI in Islam. That's what their title was. One yeah. of the person was from Pennsylvania University. His name is Alfred Moll. So okay. I would like to share his thesis few pages yes. uh, to start with, if you allow me. Uh, let me bring it up on my side. So you want to share share something? Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, and uh, and brother, for the viewers, I've added a link to the book in the in the chat in the public chat. Feel free to download the book. It's a, it's an amazing book. Jazakallah khairan. Now, if you could share these pages. Okay, one second. Um, okay, did you put it? Uh, okay, add to screen. This is the one you wanted to share? Yes. Okay. Uh, now, it's a page of a thesis by Alfred Moore, who did the PhD 
on Mirza Kulam Khadiani and his cult. And yeah. his conclusion was that it is false. It does yes. not conform to the basic principles of Islam. And more importantly, you can see it's the page number 29 or 25. Let me go to 25. The on and the screen, it's 25, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And uh, I will enlarge it so that everyone yes. can see it. Uh, yeah, we can see it better now. Yeah. Yeah, this mental illness. man, mm -hmm. now this is page 24. You can see he has written the title is The Mental Illness. Yes. And he thought the if he is not a doctor he is a theologist his yes. opinion i will read in his own words he says the second cause contributing to the success of movement was the mental illness which coalesced with the first cause whether it was the british or anyone else who ruled the country mirza gulam ahmed under the impact of the functional disorder caused by the disease and he thinks he suffered from schizophrenia yes. and psychosis. Yes. Would have I... emerged as a pretender of the office of Messiah. He said that the, although he was backed by certain people, yes. but still, if nobody was on his back, he would have claimed to be a prophet anyway. Okay. And I will show these another page. It's page 25. That's the continuation of his thesis. The claimant Mirza Ghulam Ahmed asserted that he was the recipient of divine revelations, hallucinations, as yes. you mentioned, yes. uh, in the positive criteria of schizophrenia. Yes. Uh, positive symptoms, as we call them. Asserted that he was the recipient of the divine revelations on the basis of his affliction with two diseases. This is a reinterpretation of the hadith cited by Ibn Khaldun. And we, I have got that hadith as well. It says when Isa yes. will come, he yes. will be wearing two yellow sheets, one above and one below. And I okay. continue reading his thesis. He says, in which it is stated that Jesus will descend from heavens clothed in two yellow sheets. The revelation and interpretation of the Mirza Ghulam are the inevitable consequences of his disease. Then I have highlighted another part of his thesis. You, I am just trying to make it bigger so everyone yeah, can read we can it. See it. Thank you. Yes. Uh, it is one disease which affected two different areas of his being. The source of both is one. Now, mm -hmm. this is a very crucial line in his statement. He says that Mirza Ghulam Qadiani, actually, I can tell you the reference of that book where he says I've got two diseases so that okay. all Qadianis know what I'm talking about. Yes. Uh, let me pull out that reference. It's Rohani Khazain, Jil 20, Volume 20, page 46, Taskara to Shahadatan. I read in Urdu, then I'll translate in English. Okay. Do you want me to stop sharing the screen or you, you want to keep it on? No, no. Uh, now, no, I don't. Let me have a look which screen are we sharing at the moment because I've gone on to the next screen. No, uh, I, I, I'll share another one. Okay. Okay. Uh, let me go there. Stop sharing this and. I'll share another one. So, you know, the Qadianis, they make a fuss that we are making up these things. I don't want them to say that thing. Yeah. No, we need to give references. Yeah. Yes. And here, that's this. Please share this one. Bismillah. Yeah, there we go. It's in Urdu. You can see the reference is there. It's Ruhani Khzain, yeah. volume 20, page 46, Taskra to Shahadatan. I'm yes. going to read the original text written by Mirza Qadiani. He says, okay. Masiyah Maud, do bimariyon ke saath zahir hoga. I want to make it clear to everybody. I mean, uh, our brother who is the host of this show probably knows more than me as well. There is no concept of Masiyah Maud, the promised Messiah in Islam. When the Isa al-Islam came and claimed to be the Jesus or the Messiah, 
yes. Jewish people gave this concept that he is not the real Messiah. Actually, the real Messiah has to become, has to come, and he, they called their Messiah the promised Messiah. Yes. So yes. the promised Messiah is the Jewish Messiah. So he says, Mirza says, Messiah Maud do bimariyon ke saath zahir hoga. He will come with two diseases. Kyunke tabir ke ilam mein zard kapde se murad bimari hai. It means in the interpretation of royas or the dreams, uh, the knowledge of that, the yellow cloth is taken as a disease. So he says, actually, the two sheets of uh, Isa al Islam mean two diseases, or wo dono bimariya mujhe hai. Subhanallah. Yani ek sar ki bimari. He describes it. He says, one disease is in my head, and second disease is the excessive urination, dusri kasrat ke pishaf, or daston ki bimari, and excessive diarrhea. He says, the one sheet below is actually the excessive urine and my, his diarrhea and the sheet above is the mental illness and I have got the other reference. I, I would l try to bring it out. He describes it, what kind of disease. Uh, here, let me see the reference. Now I will read this one. This is Rouhani Khzain, volume 19, page 435. Naseem Dawat is the name of the book. I have highlighted this and I'll enlarge it so that all Qadianis could see it. Chunache misal ke taur par zahir karta hoon ke mujhe do mars daman gir hai. It's very important. You see, this is the explanation of his previous reference. Yes. Ek jism ke, he says, I've got the two diseases. Ek jism ke upper ke hissa mein. The one which is in the upper part of my body, ke sardard, headache, and durane sar. Durane sir actually is the mental illness. He so describes it. I'll show you that reference as well. That what does he mean by Durane sir? Okay. Or Durane khun kam okar haat pair sard ho jana, nabz kam ho jana. That is hysteria. He says that his blood pressure comes down, his yes. hands and feet go cold and his pulse go low. Dusre jism ke niche ke hissa mein pishab ki kasrat se aana aur aksar dust aate rehna. The lower one is consistent that says the lower sheet mean actually excessive urine and excessive diarrhea. Subhanallah. Uh, and I will show you the explanation of this. This is his own writing, Dr. Sayyid, correct? Yeah, absolutely. His own book, his writing, his words, nothing to do with us. So th that is very important. I just want to highlight to the audience. Subhanallah. So the, the, the person themselves, so in, in my field, a patient, themselves is saying, I have a mental illness. This is the first time I've come across this really, uh, subhanAllah, insightful that the, the, the prophet or the false prophet Mirza is actually telling people through his writing that he's suffering from a mental illness. And subhanAllah, yes, he is. And subhanallah people are still believing that he's a prophet. Yes, that's very amazing, actually. Now, I will read this explanation. It's the further explanation of his disease. Yes. He says, Daimul Mars Admi hu. It means I have always been unwell. Or wo zard chadrein jin ke baare mein hadiso mein zikr hai. He says those two sheets which are described in the hadith of my Aqa Mawla Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alaihi wasallam sayings ke in do chadron mein masih nadal hoga. The Messiah will come in those two sheets and or those are chadre mere sharmle hal hai. He says, I have got those two sheets. They are with me. Then he goes, jin ki tabir ilme roya ke roo se do bimariya hai. He says, according to the interpretation of dreams knowledge, it means two diseases. So, ek chadar mere upper ke hissa mein hai, ke hamesha sar dard aur durane sar aur kami hai qaap aur tashanje dil ki bimari. He is describing a typical symptom of somatic symptom disorder, which is DSMV5. Yes. He says that's the one in the upper part. Then in red, I've written lower part again. Niche ke hissa badan mein bimari diabetes hai. He says the one which is below is diabetes. Ke ek muddat se I'm suffering from it from, for a long time. 
اور بسا اوقات سو سو دفعہ رات کو یا دن کو پیشاب آتا ہے ہی سیز ایٹ ٹائمس آئی پاس ڈیورنگ ہنڈریڈ اور مور ٹائمس ان اے ڈے اور نائٹ اور اس کثرت پیشاب سے جس قدر وارد ضعف ہوتے ہیں وہ سب میرے شام لے آئے ہی سیز آئی فیل ویری ٹائرڈ ہی سیز بیکاز آف دس آئی گو ایبسلیوٹلی ڈیڈ and i will show you the reference you know you described it in one of your presentation that these people psychotic people and schizophrenic yes. they feel very tired and i will yes. show you his reference he says i am i feel so tired that when i move one step in the stairs i think i will fall and die on the step that dr. is the yeah. dr sayed I'll, i think uh, another important point just uh, because we'll miss it This is another thing, you know, when somebody has extreme fatigue, um, they're more likely to suffer from hallucinations, you know, del- uh, delirium, for example. As you know, you're a medical doctor. Um, yeah, when somebody, mashallah. When somebody is dehydrated um, yes. and they can develop, uh, you know, a delirious type uh, uh, phenomena, what that means for the, the lay, for the, everybody else, is that they're more likely to suffer from hallucinations. So not only is Mirza saying in his own words that he has a mental illness or a illness in his head but also that he's dehydrated if you're passing urine 100 times per day it means that you're going to be dehydrated which means that maybe some of these visions he was having or these beliefs they were delusions and hallucinations secondary to his physical uh, exertion oh thank you very much that you have yeah. been you have made very useful comments actually yeah, okay I, i'm so yeah. happy that i have met somebody who thinks what i used to think all the time Uh, and I will read a little more. Please, carry on. Yes. Now he is describing what I just told you. Basa okat mera ye haal hota hai ke namaz ke liye jab zina chad kar upar jata hoon to mujhe apni zahir haalat par umeed nahi hoti ke zina ki ek seedhi se dousri seedhi per paon rakhte tak mein zinda rahun ga. He says, sometimes when I go for prayer and move on the steps, It looks like that if I will move from one step to another, he says that I think I'm so tired that I believe that I wouldn't live to go on to the second step. That's the extreme of tiredness he describes. His words, not mine. Now, this shakhs ki zindagi ka ye haal hai, ke har roz maut ka saamna iske saamne mojood ho, aise marzoon ke anjaam ki nazeerein bhi mojood. He said that my disease And my illness is so grave that every day I face death. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Now I will show you the other explanation of his disease. Now, uh, this one I, show, I will show later because here it says that he is impotent. Subhanallah. And now uh, I want to show you one particular one where he describes his Particularly says he is mentally ill. Uh, oh, uh, here but... you go. This yeah. is Siratul Mahdi. Every Qadiani should see that, that we are telling you what Mirza has written. This is, book is written by his son called, so-called son, because we don't believe he, had a, uh, he was his father, but he, uh, he, his name was Mirza Bashir. He was okay. second, uh, young, second after the oldest one. Uh, so the was book he a spiritual is, son or a biological son? <laughs> Yeah, not biological. I mean, he's a uh, named son. son. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. his book is called Siratul Mahdi. Page is 340, volume number two. Tradition number 372, they fake traditions. He said, you know, Dr. Meer Muhammad Ismail, I'll tell you who that chap was. He married a 16-year-old Nusrat Jahan Begum when he was 50-something-year-old, a 46-year-old, actually. Okay. That's what he says. And Meer Muhammad Ismail is the older brother of that second wife. So he was a doctor, medical doctor as well. Okay. Uh, Dr. Meer Muhammad Ismail Saab ne musse bian kiya. So he is the, actually the brother of his uh, mother, his m- mamu, as we say in Urdu. Yes, uncle. Uh, yeah. Mm. Ke mein, mein, yeah, uncle. Ke yes. Ne kai dafa Hazrat Mas- I can't say this word. Hazrat yes. Masih, I'll skip the rest. Say suna okay. ke mujhe hysteria hai. You see? 
ही इज एडमिटिंग ही हैज गॉट एस एस एच डी बाजूकात आप मिराक भी फरमाया करते थे ब्रदर डू यू नो वट डज मिराक मीन नो माई उर्दू इज नॉट एज गुड एज योर्स एंड आई टेल यू वट द मिराक मीन एंड फॉर द बेनिफिट ऑफ कादियानीज आई गिव द रेफरेंस एज वेल ओके देर इज ए रेख्ता डिक्शनरी ऑनलाइन यस एंड ऑल दी अदर उर्दू डिक्शनरी द मिराक हैज बीन ट्रांसलेटेड एज माली खौलिया माली खौलिया मीन किनिया बेसिकली ओके ओके पागलपन मेंटल इलनेस मेंटली and they had Mirza evidence Mirza is the only mentally. one if at yeah. all he was anything who admit that the proof of his prophet who is his mental illness being majnoon is being oh. prophet for qadian now so he he is saying him his own mouth he is saying he is mentally ill of course this is written by his son i haven't written that book subhanallah i'll so, read more yeah yeah, yeah subhanallah you, that's very important you know like Uh, for example uh, all of the prophets they were accused of being you know uh, magicians or being crazy including the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam but they had evidence for their prophethood you know they were able to commit uh, do miracles they were truthful there was the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was a, a sadiq al amin but this is the first time i've seen somebody who's supposed to be claiming to be a prophet and saying i'm mentally ill <laughs> no no he says his mental illness is the proof of his prophethood allahu akbar it's a proof <laughs> Now, of his mental illness No, no I, I don't go into many details. I just tell the simple thing to the Kadianis that listen, my dear. All the prophets, although yeah. they people said they might have mental illness, but they denied it categorically. They said we are not mentally ill. Yeah. You are Mirza is saying I am mentally ill. Not only he says I am mentally ill, but he says this is the proof of my prophethood. And Quran says eleven times. that a majnoon cannot be a prophet of allah at all you, you, the history you know, yeah, stops yeah. here you know so uh, i'll read it yeah, yeah sorry i just wanted to mention to this to the audience and also bashir and you know if you come with me to uh, a psychiatric uh, inpatient unit so patients who are admitted uh, for treatment of psychiatric disorders i can show you 10 people who claim to be the mahdi or claim to be isa alay salam or claim to be allah and subhanallah you know <laughs> shadi you tell know, brother it, about jamba and other 11 prophets in qadiani there are 12 claimants at the moment alive and six so, of them i know are being treated for schizophrenia subhanallah so basically my ward could be full of uh, all of these people for treat, treatment subhanallah no no shadi knows all that and i will read uh, rest yeah, of yeah. says continue continue yes. I'll again tell for Kadiani. Hazrat Masi se suna hai. You know the your uh, Mirza used Mirza Kad Gulam Kadiani has said this. K he has got hysteria, I E S S D, very serious disorder nowadays. Baas Kad, aap mrak bhi firmaya karte the. And all Kadiani, please look in Rekhta dictionary. It gives the English meanings as well. It means the mental illness and mali khaliya. लेकिन दरअसल बात यह है कि आपको दिमागी मेहनत और शुबाना रोज तसनीफ के मुशक्कत की वजह से बाज ऐसी एस बी इलामत नाउ दन इज गिविंग एक्सप्लेनेशन ही सेज एक्चुअली दिंग इज मिर्जा यूज टू राइट टू मैनी बुक्स एंड लुक लुक एट दी डिस्क्रिपेंसी बिटवीन दैम मिर्जा इज सेंग नो 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 आई हैव गॉट ए हिस्टीरिया आई हैव गॉट ए मिराम आई हैव गॉट ए मिराक आई हैव गॉट एस एस टी आई हैव गॉट स्किजोफ्रीनिया सन सेज ओ नो 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 बिकॉज यू यूज टू वर्क वेरी हार्ड So <laughs> then he describes it. Listen, listen. He he has got no knowledge of medicine. He think he can fool us. Now yeah. this is important. Chakron ka an yakdam zayi fo jana. I mean, lots of weakness. All of a sudden, chakron ka ana, which mean he used to feel giddy. Hath yeah. paon ka sard ho jana, which mean the hands and feet will go cold. Gabrahat ka hona, i.e., palpitations. 
ऐसा मालूम होना कि अभी दम निकलता है ही काम जस्ट को ना डाई दैट्स ऑल साइंस ऑफ हिस्टीरिया माई डियर या किसी तंग जगह पर बास उकात ज्यादा आदमियों में घिर कर बैठने से दिल का परेशान होना ही सेट वेन ही बी सराउंडेड बाई फ्यू पीपल ही विल गेट वेरी अपसेट He This will. is anxiety disorder. It sounds like absolutely anxiety disorder. Yes. ये असाब की जकावत हस और तकान की इलामतें हिस्टीरिया के मरीजों को भी होती हैं. Now he had no knowledge of medicine. और इन्हीं yes. मानों में हजरत साहब को हिस्टीरिया और मिराक था. He said his mental illness. Now I will show you the proof of his mental illness from his uh, hallucination and delusion and delusions. Uh, he has actually left such an amount of evidence. that no one can deny anything so please go ahead i want to listen to you what do you have to say about these things yes uh, so should you want to stop sharing your screen y- yeah yeah i can stop yeah. it for now okay. but I- i'll show you later few more references yeah 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 let me actually for the uh, for the benefit of our audience i want to show uh, a video uh, just bear with me please share screen So these are all references that you have directly from his writings. Absolutely, the last reference was from his son's writing, uh, Bashir Mirza Bashir. Bashir. Okay, just bear with me, please. I want to show you something. If I cancel this, let me share. Present my screen. Okay. Can you see my screen, uh, Doctor Sub? Yeah, yeah, I can see. I just bear with me. I want to show something here. Oh, you have got the same references as I used in my video. Masha Allah. <laughs> <laughs> we we have got the common references. Yes. So this uh, is a video. Inshallah, it should work. Just bear with me. This is. Uh, let me. Play it. So uh, your official diagnosis is uh, schizophrenic psychosis. <laughs> For the time being, how do you mean? My. Uh... Illness doesn't really fit in the medical definition. Could you uh, describe to us your your illness and your symptoms? Several hallucinations. say they uh, what exactly do you do you see Things. even now in here as we speak yeah right behind me does he uh, say anything yes what does he say Yeah. 
here to go. Okay, did you did you see that video? Yes, I did. Yeah. So this is for the benefit of the audience. This is somebody who has a schizophrenic illness. So can you imagine uh, Mirza Saab uh, himself saying he has a mental illness? And this is uh, obviously somebody with schizophrenia is going to be having a lot of the issues. Um, but not every schizophrenic claims to be a, a, a prophet. So subhanAllah. You know, uh, Dr. Sayyid is really eye-opening that you've actually given direct references from his own writings where he says he has a mental illness. Not just that, that he claims that that's a proof for his prophethood. And subhanAllah, that's amazing. That is amazing. Yeah. I'll show you yeah. many more references because uh, it's important that we match the knowledge of medicine yes. with his own writings. Correct. And Correct. Uh, uh, I, I will share another screen with you. And this time you have shown the video. I'll show you that how his hysteria attack used to be. One thing I want to tell you, I mean, I've read all the Kadiani books, actually more than 100 books I've read about Kadiani, written by Kadiani, it's big books. Yes. There is lots of contradiction. I have yes. intentionally read one description of Mirak for you. He says it's because he used to write too much and all those things. And now yes. I will read another description from the same book, you will say even the sun is writing two different descriptions of the same event. Oh. And uh, uh, let me share with you this time, the screen. We have, there's somebody called Amir Qureshi in the back. I don't know if you know who, who that is. Maybe no, it's I just somebody, we'll, once we finish our presentation, we'll uh, allow people to join and and ask us questions and have a discussion show yeah the, the name rings of oh actually he's in the backstage uh i don't remember who he is but i don't remember a lot of people <laughs> but yeah totally up to you brother however you want to do it we don't care but, i look. think i think it's it's better for us to complete the presentation okay. um and then we'll open it, the floor up i think what do you think dr sayed no no that's after the presentation anybody yeah. can come i think we'll yeah. be happy I'm just trying to look for the screen I want to share. I think that's the screen I want to share because it's uh, so small. Yes. No, 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 no. That's not the one. Okay. Uh, sorry. No, it's okay. Uh, Take your time. Yeah, Bashir, just to mention, subhanAllah, you know, as a psychiatrist, it, it, it everything just clicks that he had a, a mental illness, you know. Um, kind of, you know, um, one of the ways to uh, prove the prophethood of the Prophet Muhammad Sallam is, you know, the claim that he made that an angel came to him and uh, brought revelation and told him to read and the first ayat of Quran were revealed. There's four options. Obviously, as Muslims, we believe that he was telling the truth. But there's three other options. Either he was lying, na'udhu billah. And if somebody is lying, they have to have a motive. You know, they have to seek power and wealth. And the Prophet Muhammad Sallam, he was going against society. So the claims that he was making was actually putting his health in physical harm and psychological harm so that doesn't make sense the other option is he could have been mentally disordered he could have been schizophrenic having delusions and hallucinations but that doesn't uh, meet he doesn't meet that criteria because subhanallah he he was such uh, an amazing leader husband you know he achieved so much and somebody who has his mental illness untreated um, there's a concept of called duration of untreated psychosis um, so if you have a psychotic illness and you don't treat it the, it becomes uh, progressively worse, okay? Uh, and there's no way, and there's independent non-Muslim witnesses who, clay, who you know, testify to the greatness of the Prophet Muhammad's you know, mission. Um, uh, Mr. Hart, his book about the 100 most influential people in, in the history of uh, humankind, he put number one as Muhammad Sallam because he said that he achieved what no other man achieved. So somebody with an untreated mental illness could not have done that. And the third option is uh, uh, what the Christians claim, that the devil deceived him, which doesn't make sense because throughout the Quran, um, you know, Allah SWT tells us, A'udhu Billahi Minish Shaitan Rajeem, we seek re refuge from the Satan. And, you know, why would Satan take people worshipping idols to worshipping one God? It doesn't make sense. You know, he would want people to commit polytheism. So those are the four options. So we can apply the same uh, methodology to Mirza, okay? So it's it from what uh, Dr. Saab is telling us from his writings, 
he definitely had a mental illness, but also he could have been lying uh, for personal gain and glory, etc. So I think both of those are on the table. What do you think, yeah, uh, Bashir? Let me interject. And uh, 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 Dr. Say, the Holy Spirit, are, are, are you ready? Did you find what you need to find? Yes, yes, I'm ready. Yeah, give, give me just a minute. So let me just add a few more things. Mirza Ghulam Ahmed's father, Mirza Ghulam Murtaza, he would, Mirza Ghulam Ahmed did not make his silly claims while he was alive. If he would, his dad would have, you see what I mean? And look, he was, his dad, he, 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 he had a dream where his dad was holding a stick and his dad was about to hit him. <clears throat> and he said, and he started to cry, who hits their son? <laughs> he had this dream. And then he says, his God made his dad die. His dad and his brother, his, his God made them die to, to clear the way for Mirza Ghulam Ahmed to make his claims. So, um, once, so, so this is really bad, right? So, um, and uh, uh, Mirza Ghulam Ahmed was not a father himself, okay? Being a father doesn't mean biological, which we're questioning that also. Being a father means raising your children, throwing a yeah. ball at them, teaching yeah. them Arabic, teaching them manners, teaching them who you are. Tarbiya, uh, tarbiya, yes. Yeah. Yeah, he was an absent father, right? In fact, when, when, when he was 27 years old, in his, in his mid-20s, his dad sent him to go pick up his pension. And son didn't come back. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, he sent a letter from the road somewhere and said, sorry, dad, I, I spent all the money on, you know, in our culture, we call it kutana. You know, you spent the money on, on what did you spend on drink, women, and dancing, and these things? Brother, you, you, you can't come home. So his dad said, Saza, you will never come. He was banished from his house. Now, you know, we come from the same culture. When you get banned yeah. from home, it's a big thing yeah. in our culture, right? Yeah, yeah. He, he couldn't come home for Eid. Eid that they know it. Dad, slap him in the head. <laughs> he can't come home. He, he only came home once his mom died. Then he was allowed to come home. So with that being said, uh, um, over you, Dr. Say, the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Uh, you know, the Shaji is telling a very important thing. You see... He claims to be a prophet, and I ask a question to the Qadianis. You know, he stole the pension money of his entire family in, 19, in 1862, which was 700 uh, rupees that time. And he went with his first wife's brother called um, Imam Deen, and he spent it in the red light area in Lahore, by watching the prostitutes dance and having sex with them and all those things. Then he was involved in a, a loot where he was apprehended by the police as well. SubhanAllah. His father, after this, he told him that don't come back home, so he went to Sialkot. He stayed in Sialkot for four years. Yes. And he came back after his mother's funeral was done and his mother died. Yeah. I ask a very important question from the Qadianis. You know, his mother's last word, they are not documented by Qadianis because they are very bad. She said in Punjabi, kadi na dave, which means, God, may God never keep you in comfort ever. That was the last comment of his mother about Mirza Ghulam Qadiyan. Now, even if we ignore these comments, I want to ask a question from Qadiyan. Prophets are born, they are not created. Yes. They come as a prophet. If yes. he was prophet, the mother's place in our life is so high. Yes. Excellent. How could she not ask in four years, even once, that I want to see Mirza Ghulam Qadiani. My son is going to be a prophet. Show me my son before I leave this world. She didn't do that. Qadiani literature is dead quiet on this topic. It's silent, yes. You know, this is a really, yeah, this is a really important point. Uh, as part of our Aqeedah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran that don't even say off to your parents. So that we know that the status of our parents is very high. Uh, and if our parents are displeased with us, obviously excluding an uh, un-Islamic practices, then we are putting our akhirah at, at risk. So subhanAllah, like his father, Mirza Ghulam's father, was uh, very angry at him. And his Absolutely. mother also had very bad words uh, uh, to say, or 
let's say, not positive words to say about him. That is an indication, subhanAllah, if I, if my mother is unhappy at me and she passes away, I'll be very upset and distressed. Uh, and I'm sure Bashir and Dr. Sayyid the same. There's actually one hadith, I need to check the, the authenticity of it. I think you may have heard about this. One of the Sahabi, he, his mother was very angry at him uh, and he was dying and he couldn't say La ilaha illallah. You know, he was having difficulty. So they called the Prophet Muhammad to, you know, see what's going on. And it was revealed to him, uh, the, the, the Sahaba, other Sahaba said that his mother is angry at him. So subhanAllah, he went to his, the Sahabi's mother and he said, my mother, please uh, forgive your son because he's not able to recite the Shahada because you're angry at him. And she refused initially, but then obviously the Prophet ﷺ insisted. Once she forgave him, then he was able to say the Shahada and he passed away. So, I mean, this is a Sahabi. What about a Prophet? Yani, how can a Prophet's parents be displeased with him? Yeah. Uh, you know, this particular thing reminded me another reference. This is Volume 1, Sirat Should, I, sh should I share your, your, uh, your uh, screen? No, Dr. that Sayyid. reference is not there, but I'm okay. giving the Thanks. details of this reference. It is yeah. Siratul Mahdi, Volume 1, page 10 and 11. These two pages give a graphic details of the last moments of Mirza Qadiani before he died. Right? Yes. Despite they have washed out the bad details out of it, which the others have written in their memoirs, the in the entire description, at no point his son writes that he said La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah before dying. Subhanallah. And when you said that, it struck to me very hard that the description of his death, which is a very bad death one can have, yes. at no point it says he ever said any kalima or any good things before he died. His last oh. words are documented in a book called hayat e nasir In old edition, it was page number 14. In new edition, its page number was 13. And his last words, his father-in-law, Nasser Nawab, he was no Nawab of any place. He was just a, a kind of, he used to make the maps for uh, some kind of organization. So he writes his last words were, Mir Saab, Mujhe Haza Gobai Haza Ho Gya. He said, Mr. Mir, I'm suffering from seasonal uh, cholera. Hmm. And this wow. was the condition of his Mubala with Sanaullah, Mulana Sanaullah Rahmatullah. That yes. the liar will die either with cholera or another disease, they say, which is, I think it was town plague. Yes. So these are after that, Mirza Nasser Nawab, his son in law, writes in his memoirs, in his autobiography, that after this, no words came out of his mouth. So I asked Kadiani, Prophet going back to his creator, he should be, if he was Muslim at all, in by any meaning of the word, he should have said, Ashad Allah, ilaha illallah. He didn't say anything from Quran or Hadith. His last words were, I am dying. I have the seasonal cholera. Really? And that was his last words? Last words. And his own father-in-law, the father of Nusrat Jahan Begum, his favorite wife, he had only two uh, legal wives, okay. writes, not we are not writing, he is writing, and he accepted him as a Naus Billah Messiah. And he said after this, he did not say any understandable word. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. So the evidence uh, now you can share that, and I will. Yes. Now, th this is another reference you can see from. I have written in English above it that it's hysteria and hypochondriasis. Yes, yes. Uh, it is Siratul Mahdi, page 15, volume 1. And I will read it to you. 
you know, one day Mirza had this attack. You know, when I used to read that PhD thesis, I used to describe this and Kadiani would say, oh, he is so much against us, he is making up things. So I always read it for their benefit. Yes. Uh, he said, when he had an attack, I, she, Nusra Jahan Begum, his second wife, went to the so-called mosque. It was just a little small room full of smell. Man, Mas Parhar, Mirza describes, he said, then Mirza Kadiani is describing now. He's, Mirza said, Man, Mas Parhar, Raha Tha, Ke Mene Dekha, Koi Kali Kali Cheez, Mere Saam Ne Se Uthi. First of all, he never led the prayers. It is a lie. He, uh, brother, I'll want to tell you something about Mirza Kadiani. I think it will be a revelation for you. I have got a challenge for Kadianis that they call Mirza a prophet, a prophet who became prophet after a complete following of our Aka Mawla Muhammad Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which is a complete lie. If any Kadiani bring me one sermon of Friday, one Friday sermon of Mirza Kadiani, I'm just asking one. It yeah. can be even one paragraph, not a huge sermon. One sermon of Mirza Kadiani, I will become Kadiani. Subhanallah. He never gave any Friday sermon at all. He never led the prayers. He used to be, we will not, uh, le let me finish this one because it's yes. a very, I can talk for months about Mirza Kadiani and this Khrafat of Mirza Kadiani. Yeah. Now, I, I was reading, he said that koi kali kali cheese mere saamne se uti. You know, he saw something very black in front of his eyes. You know, like we see in the hypotension in young yeah, age yeah. and old age. Kali kali cheese mere saamne se uti. Or asman tak chale gai. This could now, be, a, this sounds like a hallucination, Dr. Sayyad. Yes, it is because the blackness which comes because of hypotension, which his son was employing in the previous page. Yes, yeah. yes. Doesn't go towards the sky. Correct. No it, patient it, ever said that. It's a it's a visual hallucination. What is absolutely described. visual hallucination? Yes. Mein cheekh marker zameen par gir gaya. Now Mirza is describing. He's describing in Mirza Kadiani's words. He said, "I said oh and fell down on the earth." Or <laughs> Gashi ki halat tari ho gayi. He said, "I was unconscious." Now the man himself is saying he was unconscious. Subhanallah. Walda sahaba firmati hain, the mother, the wife of Mirza Kadiani, the mother of Bashir, uh, says, iske baad aapko baqaida daure padne shuru ho gaye. They mm. said he used to suffer regularly from these attacks. Episodes, Not one yeah. or two, regularly until he died. Khaak mm. Saad ne poochha, daura mein kya hota tha? <laughs> you see, the Bashir is saying, I asked my mother, what used to happen during this attack? Yeah. Walda Saba ne kaha, the mother said, haath paon thande ho jate the, the hands and feet used to get cold, badan yes. ke pathe khich jate the, you know, the muscles used to get stretched, and gardan yeah. ke pathe aur sar mein chakkar hota tha. You see, the neck used to be very stiff and he used to feel giddiness. Mm. Then he says, is waqt aap apne badan ko sahar nahi sakte the, it means he couldn't stand with and he either will fall down or he will sit down. Shuru yeah. shuru mein ye dore bhoat sakt hote the, iske baad doron ki aisi sakti nahi rai. This is one typical thing and I want to show you the other ones you will see. Uh, and other, let me find out that reference. Dr. Sayyid, yeah, this, this could also be an epileptic uh, attack. Uh, it sounds, you know, like his muscle tone changed. Um, I don't know if there's any uh, evidence or any observation of him having a, like a tonic clonic uh, type seizure where he was shaking or, you know, I don't know if there's any references. Now, I want to tell you this thing. The epilepsy, I mean, both mm. of us know the medicine. I mean, we have studied in the best institution in Europe. Alhamdulillah. Uh, Alhamdulillah. Uh, the thing is, epilepsy, grand mal epilepsy, petite mal epilepsy, absence yes. attacks, and all these varieties, none of them fit on this particular one. 
none yeah. of the grand mal epilepsy people see black things and fall down and cry correct. And yeah, yeah. correct yes they bite their tongue and they wipe the urine these are the two outstanding feature of grand mal epilepsy yes yes and all the other features are a features of hysteria yes and Hi grand mal yeah. epilepsy yeah. they jerk their yeah. there's a sure. jerk in their hands i have a video of an epileptic attack i'll show afterwards inshallah yeah, yeah sure and uh, le yeah. let me tell you show you these differences quickly what what you're describing is what we say psychosomatic uh, psychosomatic episode. disorder yeah. ssd yeah. somatic yeah, so symptom what, disorder yeah so what happens just for the the audience psychosomatic basically means somebody who's got psychological issues and they manifest in physical symptoms so we you know i've seen patients who had severe trauma um, and for some reason they actually go blind or they become paralyzed uh, in uh, in the part of their body so from you do all the blood tests and the scans and there's nothing obvious um, so it's purely psychological but for that individual their physical symptoms are so severe that they're convinced that there's something underlying but actually it's a severe psychological disorder Yes, Dr. Sayyid. Now, I, I'm uh, trying to find another reference which is similar to this. But anyway, when I'll come across it, I'll show you that reference Inshallah. as well. Meanwhile, I want to show you a few other things. Uh, look, this is the reference you are seeing. I, I saw in one of your presentation slides yes. this yes. reference as well. So that's yes. what I show Qadianis. But the Qadianis... I, I believe it's man yahdi Allahu fala mudillila wa man yudlilu fala hadiyala. What what I will Not, do, Doctor Sayyid, uh, I will share my presentation with you, inshallah, because it's very it's a very detailed inshallah. presentation, and you can use that to try and you know for your dawah to bring inshallah. bring Now, back to Islam. I want your opinion on this one because you are a specialist in this area. Yes. So please, please uh, let me read this reference for you. If you have come across it, then we'll make it short. It is no, Rouhani Khazain, volume yes. 19, page 50. Kishtiye no is the Noha's boat. Kishtiye no is the title of the book. And I want to tell you the background of uh, this particular uh, reference. This is the description. People asked Mirza Qadiani. That how did you become Isa ibn Maryam? He used to say he is Isa ibn Maryam and the Quran has said that he, he has been called as Isa ibn Maryam in the Quran. That's his claim and I can show you that page as well. How did he become Isa ibn Maryam? Do you know that story he described? No, I don't, I don't know. But one point that uh, refutes it directly, his mother's name was not Maryam. No, no, Chirak Bibi. So Isa ibn Maryam, how can he claim to be Isa ibn Maryam and his mother's name was not even Maryam? Uh, he is describing it. You will know. I'll read his words for please, you. Please, please, please. And you know, his mother's name was Chirak Bibi and her nickname was Ghasiti. Subhanallah. So, Subhanallah. <laughs> Shadi knows all these things. Uh, look, and uh, I'll now read it for you, how he became the Isa ibn Maryam. Uh, I'll read from the top. It says, Kya aaj se 20, 22 baras pehle, balke isse bhi zyada meri taraf ye mansubah ho sakta tha ke mein apni taraf se ilham tarah kar ke awal apna naam Maryam rakta aur phir aage chal kar iftara ke taur par ye ilham binata ke pehle zamane ki Maryam ki tarah mujh mein bhi isa ki roop hon ki ke. So he is just saying that I could have said 20, 22 years ago, but the uh, Shaji has told you when his father was alive who died in 1876 but and his brother died in 1883 he never said a word in their life that he is messiah or anything because they used to beat him up and wouldn't let him inside the house and he'll oh. be sitting outside the main house in the near the do door most of the time subhanallah that's his background. Now, listen how he became the Isa ibn Maryam. He says, Agar brahi ne ahmdiya ki talif ke wakt, jis par ek zamana guzar gaya, mujhe is mansuba ka khayal hota. He says, he wrote brahi ne ahmdiya, uh, 
Brother Musa, he wrote Brahine Amdiya in 1880. He published it in 1880, first edition, and 1884, second and third edition, and probably the fourth one between this period. He says, if I would have known at that time, why would I write in Brahine Amdiya, which is book he published in 18. 81st volume, Ke Isa Masih ibn Maryam Asman se dobara aega. He said in my book he has written that Isa al-Islam will descend from the heavens again because he has been raised with his human body. Now before I go any further, I want to tell you one of the very interesting thing about Mirza Qadiani and I will uh, give the reference for this. Mirza Qadiani has got a book which is in Rouhani Khazain, volume 18. I can't keep on saying, when I say Khazain, you take it as Rouhani Khazain because it, it's a Shaitani Khazain basically. <laughs> it, so it's Khazain, volume 8, page number 272. Nurul Haq Hissa Thaniya, the name of the book. And this is the Vahi or Ilham of Mirza Qadiani. And it's in Arabic. You are in Qatar, you will understand Arabic. Yeah. This thing doesn't go out of my head. And it yeah. means, and in Allah, definitely the Allah. Subhanallah. Doesn't leave me on, on mistake. Tarfata Ain, even for the blink of an eye. Such a liar. Mm. And here he is writing that the book I wrote in 1880, and this one is written in 1993, probably. I don't know the exact uh, year of this, but this is 20 year gap minimum. 1893, you mean? Yeah. 1893. Yeah. yeah. Uh, for 20 years, he is saying he could not figure out that he was Isa al-Islam was actually coming from heaven, not being born. Hmm. And then his ilham is, وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَتْرَكْنِ عَلَىٰ خَطَائِن تَرْفَتَعَيْن Subhanallah. You see the contradiction? Subhanallah. And now, you listen to uh, this. He says, so, because God knew that this point of knowledge will be weak on this point. He said, the God knew that if I knew that Isa al-Islam has passed away, this argument will become weak. Yeah. Then he says, That's why he has kept my name in the third volume of Brahim Ahmadiyya. He said, in the He said, in the third volume of Brahim Ahmadiyya, he called me Maryam. He gave me a name of Maryam. Who did? Allah. Allah gave him name of Maryam in, in his book, third volume, Ibrahim Amdiya. Audhu Billah. Audhu Billah. Yeah, yeah. And then, as the Ibrahim Amdiya is clear, two years ago, in the past, in the past, in the past, in the Brother, can you yes. see what he is saying? He says, for two years, I was a woman. He was Maryam, and God told him he was Maryam. You know, in English, we call them transvestites. Yeah. And this is, how yeah, can... This is, it's, called, it's called gender dysphoria, gender dysphoria or gender identity issue. So, sorry, he was, claiming to be, he was claiming to be a female. Yes, he said, for two years, I was female, and I was Maryam. Subhanallah. And God told him he was Maryam. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah. So or the, parda this, mein nasho nama pata raha. He said, I used, I grew as a Maryam behind the curtains, behind the scenes. Phir jab us par do baras guzar gaye. He said, when two years passed, jaisa ke brahine ahmdiya ke hissa chaharam safa chaar so chyanwe mein dard hai. He said, he, he said that this Brahine MD, I'll give you a little one line description. He said these five volumes he saw in a dream that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Naus Billah told him that this is the heavenly book. 
So for Qadiani, the Brahine and the is heavenly book according to Mirza. Subhanallah. Yani it's uh, divine. It's divine. Divine, divine, divine. And he couldn't figure out for 20 years and God gave him the ilham that he doesn't leave him on mistake, on error, even for blink of an eye. I mean, Qadianis, I asked them, are you okay, all Qadianis? You, you know, <laughs> Dr. Sayyid, there's something called folly adir in psychiatry or uh, Bashir is called shared delusional disorder, shared psychosis. And subhanAllah, I honestly do think a lot of Qadianis are psychotic. They share that psychotic illness that Absolutely. Mirza had. I mean, if Mirza is claiming that for two years he was a woman named Maryam, and then yeah, he became Isa ibn Maryam, yani the son of Maryam. No, no, no. I mean, uh, just listen. He will tell you how he became Isa. Honestly, but, that's the funniest part yet to so, come. Yeah. If somebody is rational, Bashir, how can you believe this stuff? I mean, he's he's saying himself, I'm mentally ill. That's his own words. So no, no, his own words. He said, I'm yeah. mentally ill. Now, he says that in Brahine Amdia, volume 4, you see, there is a between volume 4 and volume 5, there is a distance of 30 years plus. It, volume 5 was actually published in 1909, a year after his death. Posthumously. And he wrote, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, it, was actually, it was actually October 1908, like four months after he died. Yeah, four after, October 1908. Is it right? Yeah, Shaji is right. I think it was October 1908. Okay. Uh, and Brahine Amdiya Safa He is referring to the fourth volume, which was published in 1884, probably. Uh, and uh, on page number 496, he says it's written in there. That Maryam ki tarah Isa ki ruh mujh mein nafakh ki gai. Like Maryam had the spirit of Isa al-Islam sent into her, he said, same way Isa al-Islam spirit was sent into me. A'udhu billah. A'udhu billah. His words, not mine. I told you the best part is still to come. So sorry, That's just for the, for the audience, it, let's, could you just repeat that? So he claimed... That he was Maryam alayhi salam for two for years. For two years. Okay. And then he became Isa the way the spirit was in Maryam went into Isa alayhi salam. The yes, same yes. way. The, so this, the, <laughs> subhanallah. The same way that he became Isa. Absolutely. He says as the Isa alayhi salam spirit was blown into Maryam alayhi salatu salam, the same way it was blown into me. But did he Same blow spirit. it into himself then? Because he was Maryam. So he yeah, blew yeah. it in, into himself. <laughs> yes. He was into... I mean, yeah. So if, if that's not a delusion, I don't know what is a delusion. I mean, this is an extreme example, actually. And a stara ke rang mein mujh, You know, the word stara is added by Kadian. Okay. In the very first edition of this book, a stara word wasn't there. They added later on. Mm. And he says, I became pregnant metaphorically. Now, spirit he, has how, been how can blown you into him metaphorically? like... Yeah, stara is a metaphor, isn't it? No, no, I'm saying like, how, how? what's the explanation? How can somebody be pregnant metaphorically? What does that mean? You must have seen in your psychiatric ward, phantom pregnancy, <laughs> haven't you? Yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, it's a rhetorical question, but yes, carry on. Or after many months, ke baad jo das mahina se zyada nahi, bazriya is ilham ke jo sabse aakhir brahi ne amdiya ke hissa chaharam safa 550 me darj hai. Mujhe Maryam se Isa banaya gaya. He says after now listen to it. You do medicine, I know medicine. Nine months is the top of pregnancy in human being. Yep, 36 and weeks. if women become overdue by more than a week, we induce pregnancy to avoid the complication. Yes. Mirza was pregnant for 10 months. <laughs> <laughs> Subhan and 10 Allah. months pregnancy is in donkeys. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. And I mean... If you tell any doctor that somebody has given birth after 10 months, honestly, I'll tell that woman, you are joking with me. 
my dear yeah, yeah. at 10 <laughs> months your child won't be born alive because you see the growth happens in the last trimester correct right and yes. that is a trimester mean 3 months yes. and the child grow from a very light weight to at least 40 50 times of his weight and if you add a 4 months what will happen he won't be able to born alive but Subhan. Mirza was born alive from himself as an Isa Lashla. I mean, extreme of mental illness. So, sorry, uh, Dr. Sayed. He said he was pregnant for 10 months, metaphorically. Yes. Metaphorically, yes. not physically. And then after 10 months, he blew a spirit of Isa inside no, no, himself. No no, 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 no. He said first for two years he was Mariam. Okay, two for years, two yes. Years. Yes. Then God blew the spirit of Isa al-Islam into him. Okay. After that, he was pregnant for 10 months. Yes. And that God delivered from himself. And became, that's how he became Isa ibn Maryam. Subhanallah. And sorry, the Qadianis, they know about this. <laughs> I think so. I've been telling them for years. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. And they and still are willing to believe him as a prophet. Subhanallah. I mean, this is uh, amazing. This is uh, crazy. I mean, literally, it's crazy. It's more than crazy. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. And this is, and you've given the reference here, so anybody can go and check the reference. Of course, uh, I can show them. The, the, this is his original. I've got the whole book there. I can give them the whole. You know, you can download it from their website. I've downloaded it from their website. So I can uh, give them the whole book. Look. Here is the reference. You can see it. I'll bring it down. It's the Khazain volume 19, page 50, Kishti Eno. And I'll tell you one amazing thing about this book, Kishti Eno. And it's also available in English. Yeah, it's also available in English. Subhanallah. We should read their translation. They have given some word for a star, actually. Do you have the English translation there? No, I haven't got it at hand right now. I haven't downloaded that yet. I will. Now, Kishti Eno yeah. is the, you know, there are five groups of Qadianis. They have divided okay. the community into Itfalu Lamdiya, the children, Khudamu Lamdiya between 18 and 40 year old, and Insaru okay. Lamdiya, 40 plus. Okay. Nasrat, up to 16 year old girls, 16 plus. Lajanath. In all groups, Kishti Anu is a part of their syllabus. They take actually a little MCQ exam out of it from most of the time. I've seen them happening. And I ask Kadiani, why don't you read at least this book once? Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Right? So uh, I want I actually want to hear from you more. So yes. I will uh, just show you one more thing which is very important. Please. This is really important, I think, subhanAllah, for those Qadianis. Maybe they've not come across these references. Maybe they've just... No, seen... no, no. They, they have seen it. Trust me. No, I'm, I'm saying some people may not have. You know, some... Yeah, uh, yeah some people may not have. Some who who just following their forefathers. And so this is really important for them to... Because like we said at the beginning of the stream, the, the aim of this is not to attack people and not to be derogatory. No, no, no. But, but to make uh, make it clear to people that they're on falsehood and they, they should, you know, follow the truth of Islam. And this guy was completely mentally ill in his own words. And he's demonstrating the symptomatology but by his own words. SubhanAllah. Now, you know, you are a psychiatrist. Yes. And you graduated from one of the best universities in Europe. Now, yes. I say to Qadiani that don't blame me. I'm telling you Mirza Qadiani was mentally ill from his writings. Yes. And they come up with the... Now, this one is for you, especially the last two pages. You, you, can you read it? I've written hallucinations and delusions. Yes, I can read it, uh, yeah. But my Urdu is weak, so I rely on you. No, but this is the I, I, I read it for you only the highlighted area because R that's R important. Rohani Khazain Jild 2, page 99, right? Yes. Surma yeah. okay. Cheshme Arya. Yes, that's please the read name it. of the book. So Khazain volume 2, 19, page 99, Surma Cheshme Arya. And yes. look, the highlighted area is this. 
تھوڑا عرصہ گزرا ہے کہ مظفر گڑھ میں ایک ایسا بکرا پیدا ہوا کہ جو بکریوں کی طرح دودھ دیتا تھا یو سی اے میل گوٹ واز گونگ ملک لائک فی میل گوٹس دیٹس واٹ مرزا از سینگ جب اس شہر میں بہت چرچا پھیلا تو میکالف صاحب ڈپٹی کمشنر مظفر گڑھ کو اطلاع ہوئی right he said yes. it the thing spread around and the deputy commissioner came to know about it in mutafargarh to inhone ye ajeeb amre qanoon e qudrat ke khilaf samajh kar wo bakra apne roop roo mangwaya so deputy commissioner said bring that male goat who gives a milk like a female goat <laughs> <laughs> mirza is telling is mirza's writing his book he says tunacha wo bakra جب ان کے روب رو دوہا گیا تو قریب ڈیڑھ سیر اس نے دودھ دیا وی کال اٹ ہائپر لیکٹیمیا وچ از اے ہارمون ڈس آڈر از این اٹ رائٹ اٹ از ریلیٹڈ ٹو پیٹری گلینڈ بیفور اینی لیونگ کریچر انکلوڈنگ ہیومن بینگ ریچ اے اسٹیج دیٹ دے اسٹارٹ گونگ اے ملک فرسٹلی اٹس ناٹ پاسبل بیکاز ٹو گو اے ملک you need the amount of memory gland equivalent to the female yes physiological yes. fact yes pathological fact it is a glactoria and you need the hormones coming from pituitary gland stimulating yes. it and yes. it happens in certain periods alone after the child is born both in animal and in human being Yes, yes. After that, hormone balance goes back. Yes. And he is a male. Postnatal. Postnatal, yes. Yes. Now, you do medicine. Tell me, with that amount of glacteria, which will actually reflect a tumor in the head, most likely, can somebody survive five months? I would no. say no until something is done about it. Yeah. He is saying this is happening. چنانچہ وہ بکرا جب ان کے روب رو دوہا گیا تو ڈیڑھ سیر کے قریب دودھ دیا یو نو ون اینڈ اے ہاف نو تھری لیٹرس یو نو کے جی سیر از ٹو لیٹرس تھری لیٹرس ملک فرام میل گوٹ اونلی مرزا کین پروڈیوس اٹ نو 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 آئی سیڈ یو ول فائنڈ اف یو ہیونٹ ریڈ اٹ یو ول فائنڈ اٹ امیزنگ Yep. Now, the next one I'll bring up, and that's even worse. Oh, sorry, this, this uh, incident in Muzaffar Gard, Deputy Commissioner, was this verified by the Deputy Commissioner? No, there is no verification, none, zero. And, so, and you know, the, you know yeah, like, yeah, because you know, like, the, the Prophet Muhammad Sallam, he did the moon, uh, he split the moon by the, by the permission of Allah. And that yes. was witnessed by the Quraysh, it was witnessed by a king in India, in Kerala, who li- subsequently became Muslim. It was witnessed by the uh, enemies of the Prophet Muhammad and even NASA has um, on their website, uh, Sheikh Uthman ibn Farooq, he did a really good video on this. They found like there's a ridge on the surface of the moon and they said one of the reasons could be because at one point it was two different seg- segments. So there's objective verification of that miracle. Here Mirza is talking about the male pregnant, <laughs> male, sorry, goat producing milk. Yani, it was just in his head. There is no verification. Allahu Akbar. Okay. No Qadiani could ever bring any verification. And he's claiming that this is divine, a Billah, divine uh, book. That this, is that correct? No, no, that's Brahine Amdiya. Okay, the, not this the, one. Okay. okay. The, this one is uh, the, another book. Okay, okay. So this is not Now, divine. Now, look, another, I will tell you multiple incidents, instances he describes. Look. This one, better than the last one. Sorry, uh, Dr. Saeed, just one thing. The last incident he narrated, he, he, was, he witnessed it or how does he know about this? He says he witnessed it. He said people have seen it. Okay. okay. With their own eyes. So he, he is a witness. That's who, why. Yeah, you but see, he didn't name who the witnesses were. No, he doesn't name because that's an absurd lie. Who, how could he bring? Even Malawa Mal and Shrampat Lal refused Shiaji. You know Malawa Mal and Shrampat? You know? yeah. Brother, he had a lot of phantom witnesses. Normally, there were Hindu boys that disappeared. 
Dr. Abu Isa, I'll yes. tell you something. When he went for his second wedding with a 16-year-old when he was 46, yes. the chief in his brat, the people who went with him, was a Hindu called Malava Mal. He was leading them to the... And there were four people. Malava Mal was chief of... Anyway, listen to this. He says, Resham ke kide ki mada be nar ke ande deti aur in me se bache nikelte hai. After that, listen, Baz ne ye bhi dekha, chuha mitti hushk se peda hua, jiska aada dhar to mitti tha, aada chuha ban. He says, a rat was born from the mud, half was clay and half was kind of proteinous meat or something. Subhanallah, Subhanallah. What I do mean, you say as a psychiatrist? This is this is a clear mental illness. This is a delusion or a hallucination. Okay, I there's mean, a better than this one as well. I mean, because the thing is, it's a delusion if uh, you know if he firmly believes this happened, and hallucination if nobody else witnessed it, only he witnessed it. I mean, Subhanallah. What's the explanation when you bring this to Doc, uh, say, Dr. Sayyid? To the Qadianis, what do they say? Like, how do they explain this? Oh, he says that somebody else saw it. So he is just describing. And you as a psychiatrist tell me, if you see, I have seen lots of mentally ill people as well. One yes. day a woman came and one of yes. my colleagues said, oh, look, look, there, we can't treat her. You know, she has been coming for a few months to us. So yes. can you see him? See yes. her? Yes. So I saw her. I said, what happens? She said, I've got a pain in my tummy. It comes and goes. So yes. she couldn't describe the classical symptoms and signs. I thought there's something wrong. I yes. asked her when the pain comes. She said, when he looks at me from the clouds. I said, who is on the clouds? And she said, oh, he comes and he looks at me and he talks to me, he said, and tells me that he's going to stab me on my tummy. And yeah. then I start getting pain. So I told yeah. my colleague, I said, the Mosley is in front of this hospital center there. Yeah, and yeah, she he, got better. Yeah, that's a delusion. She was experiencing a delusion. Yes. Absolutely. No, no, yeah, they yeah. diagnosed her as schizophrenia later on. Yeah, yeah, but the delusion was a symptom. A part uh, of schizophrenia, yeah. major criteria. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and Allah. now this is in red. Listen to this. Look, we do medicine, both of us. Listen to this statement of Mirza Qadiani. He is saying the Hakim Karshi, a famous Hakim. And as a background, I'll tell you, Mirza Qadiani claimed to be a Hakim, a doctor of his time. He used to diagnose and give medication to people. And his right. father, Ghulam Murtaza, used to do the same. And Ghulam Murtaza, he writes in his book, when he couldn't study much, Ghulam Murtaza taught him Tib, which means medicine. Medicine, Tib, yes. Mm -hmm. Now, that chap is saying this. Listen. A... In dono tabibo mein se ek ne aur ghalban karshi ne khud apni addi mein surak ho kar aur is phir is raah se muddat tak baras yani pakhana aate rehna tahreer kiya hai. He said, karshi or somebody has been passing stools from his heel. Shall I say again? He said, he saw a person who was a hakeem. And he was passing all his life stools from his heel. Stuff. Now look, in medicine, even if I transplant large bowel into the leg up to heel, the <laughs> possibility that it will work for five minutes is next to nothing. Correct. Subhanallah, it, this, is, this is in his book. Yeah, yeah, this is his book I'm reading. What's his fascination with like bowel movements and urine and you know uh, prostitutes? Subhanallah. I mean, this he was mentally sick, very sick. I mean, uh, somebody who's a gentleman, who's a respect a respectable person. Why would he write that he saw somebody defecating from his heel? Uh, I mean, because you see, that's what I tell to Kadianis. I say. If you remember one thing, he was schizophrenic and he was very seriously mentally ill, everything will come together, why there is a contradiction there, why he wrote the funny things. And most of his book, 
are a copy from the other scholars as well, but this is not a single writer, but we are saying something which we believe Mirza has written. So I will yeah. read this page and then I will leave the comments to you. Okay. Uh, let me make it smaller so that Gadiani couldn't say that I have made it up for... <laughs> Can you yeah, give the reference, please? Yeah. yeah. Khazayan, volume 23, page 343. Book name is Chashma Marfat. I have underlined red and I have highlighted as well. It says, Iska wajood bhi hewan aur nabat mein mushtarik hai. He said, this is common between animal and plant kingdom. اور بعض درختوں کے پھل جب پختہ ہوتے اور کھانے کے قابل ہوتے ہیں تو وہ سب کے سب پرندے بن کر بن جاتے ہیں اس ایس دیر آر سرٹن ٹریز وین دیر فروٹ بیکمس رائپ دے بیکم برڈس اینڈ فلائی اوے اوکے دین ہی گیو این اگدر ایگزامپل اور دوسرے واٹ بیکمس اے برڈ دا ٹری اور دا فروٹ فروٹ بیکم برڈ اینڈ فلائیز اوے اللہ اکبر اوکے اور دوسرے پرندوں کی طرح پرواز کرتے ہیں اسے دے جسٹ فلائی لائک دی ادر برڈس ہو فلائی ود دی ونگس سو دوز فروٹس گیٹ دی ونگس آئی ہیو نیور سین دی فروٹ ود دی ونگس سو فار کادیانیو گیو می ون جیسا کہ گولر کا پھل بھی اسی طرح کا ہے ہی سیز دی گولر فروٹ آف گولر ٹری از ایگزیکٹلی لائک دس اور بعض سیاہ صاحب تجربہ بیان کرتے ہیں کہ افریقہ کے بعض جنگلوں میں ایسے درخت پائے گئے ہیں کہ ان کے پھل بھی گولر کے پھل کی طرح آخر کار چھوٹے چھوٹے پرندے بن کر پرواز کرنے لگتے ہیں ہی سیٹ سم ٹورسٹ سیز دیٹ ان افریقہ دیر آر ادر ٹریز ویئر دی فروٹ کمس اینڈ دین فروٹ بیکمس دی برڈ اینڈ فلائی لائک جسٹ لائک دی ادر فرائڈس یو سی آئی وانٹیڈ یو ٹو ہیو یو ریڈ دیز تھنگس بفور No, no, I, I haven't. Uh, so I what do you have... think? Give us your I mean, opinion, please. I mean, uh, the diagnosis is clear. He's got his, this is uh, uh, delusions, most likely of a psychotic illness. I mean, he's, he's talking about things where there's no evidence. So what, if, he, if you go back to what I presented, what is a delusion by definition is a fixed false belief, which is contrary to the evidence, right? So now he's claiming, you've given many examples, Dr. Sayyid, by his own writings, Uh, you know, a male, a male goat uh, lactating or producing milk in liters, uh, fruit that becomes birds that fly away, that he was a Maryam, uh, for two years, and then he became Isa ibn Maryam, uh, so gender issues. And then he talked about this man defecating from his heel. He, he, I mean, this is a clear mental illness, clear psychotic illness, most likely schizophrenia. Now... Uh... You see, these are not the only examples. I've got yeah, of course. These of are just, you, we will be here till next week if we give all the yeah, examples. Absolutely. Yeah. So I, for this time, I leave it here. But so, if okay. we, you had another stream, I'll show you different references. Yeah, I think we, maybe we will uh, do another stream sometime. So if I, yeah, so if, you, if I, I can stop sharing this one. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. SubhanAllah. Subhanallah. Bashir, what do you want to say? <clears throat> yeah, so so I had a few few more notes before I hand it all to you. Uh, Mirza Ghulam Ahmed used to wear full clothing in the in the heat of the of the summer. Yeah, full clothing. Say the Holy Spirit again. Like he 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 would have had to have been on alcohol, and he's just he's cold when it's hot, and yeah. uh, so that's weird. His sons used to tie his legs together. During skits of uh, during fits of schizophrenia. No, during okay. that attack which I just described and showed you the references, uh, he will fall down. Then his legs will open, and then uh, his son Fazal. You know, the, he has two sons from first wife, uh, and he will take his turban out and he will tie his legs to warm them up and to come. Uh, uh, he wouldn't shake like Grand Mal. There is no writing which says he will shake. Very heavily, yeah. like grand mal epilepsy, nothing like yeah. that. Yes, yes. Right, but his sons, his two eldest sons, the two that didn't accept him. <laughs> no, they, they didn't. They did. They, they'd see their dad. They yeah. go. They go grab him, rough him up, tie it, tie him up. You know what I mean? <laughs> why, why would they tie him up? What was the reason for that? 
He I will be turning around and falling from here to there. From if he falls on a cot, he will fall down. And uh, they thought he, the younger son was a bit sensitive guy. And yeah. uh, he thought that uh, to avoid the injury, it's best thing is that he ties his legs because they were cold as well. I think that one of the factors was that he wanted the legs to warm up a bit. And the same yeah. thing he used to rub his hands as well. Okay. Yeah, and look, I can see the son saying, <laughs> Rasi laya. Rasi. <laughs> Okay, then, then, um, so, okay, you asked why are amnies are crazy too because of Ruzzy and all. Ruzzy is an asylum case. So imagine you didn't do anything in your life. You didn't earn anything. And these people got you out of Pakistan for free. Yeah. Or maybe you gave us some chanda. They got you to the West. They got you to Germany. They got you to Canada. So what they're doing is now, okay, now we, we will give you our life. Whether it's true or not, we won't double check. You helped us. You know, some people they help, some people they rob. You know, it, it, there's a spectrum of the Ponzi scheme. Some people get benefit, majority are getting robbed. So, okay. <clears throat> uh, uh, Zeriab or, or Zevius, the, 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 um, the guy who came on the stream yesterday and compared the death of Mirza Glam Ahmed to the death of Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's also an asylum case. He actually lives down the street from me, and they are they won't invite me to their temple to talk, right? Mm -hmm. But he's an asylum case. So he doesn't care if the argument's stupid or not. They he doesn't him, care about the truth. Yeah. He doesn't care. He they yeah. told him go say it. He went and said it. You know, he didn't think, you know, and and <clears throat> well, if, if if you're in Pakistan and and you're sharing a house with four other families and you barely have a job, and all, all of a sudden they change your life. And, and and you got asylum to the West, you got a job and everything in an AMD company, you know, now they're showing loyalty. So that's the reason. Okay, then <clears throat> Mirza Glam Ahmed, he, he made up a medicine called uh, Marhami Isa. Uh, he says, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to come to that. I'm going to come to that. He invented a bunch of medicine, but one of them is uh, Marhami Isa, which he lied and said the famous Muslim doctor, medical person, uh, Abu Sina, he said yeah. Abu Sina used it. Ibn Sina, Ibn Sina, yeah. Ibn Sina. He said Ibn yeah. Sina used it. Lie, lie. In fact, in their in their newest edition of Jesus in India, they admit that uh, 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 this this medicine is not in Abu Sina's uh, book. It's called something else. Well, Mirza Glam has said it's called Marhami Isa. So he's delusional. He he'll lie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Then yeah. he invented a medicine called Zadame Ish. Which is Viagra, Kadiani Viagra. Remember, he was impotent. So the opium during his yes, life. This, he, this is this is uh, this is important. I want to talk about that. Carry yeah, on. Please. Yeah. So he never admitted to taking opium or alcohol in his life. Okay. His sons told us after. Oh, he he was on it. You know, every day. Um. So with the opium, uh, uh they say he only took it once. He only took Zadami ish once because he was impotent. It fixed him. He never took it again. Uh, as if it fixed the impotency. We have the the ingredients. There's like mercury in this thing. We can make it now and test to see if it works. It doesn't, yeah, yeah. right? So so the Zadame is another one. Then during the plague, he invented a Tiriaki Elahi, which was mostly opium, um, and it didn't even work. The British government banned it, and uh, there's a newspaper uh, called him an idiot. Um, uh, I can't remember the name of the newspaper. Okay, then... <clears throat> so remember, the reason he was saying that birds just fly out of a of fruit. a uh, of a fruit, fruit you know, yeah. maybe he was referring to he was trying to refer to insects who who might feed on a bird and fly out of it. Oh, we don't know. Um, however, he was trying to prove that that things can come into existence spontaneously without the agency of a law. He, he even said worms in the rainy weather reproduce, they do this, okay? Eventually, the Qadiani Amdis, Astag for the law, would say that a, a Maryam was a hermaphrodite, and she impregnated Allah. herself. This is, brother, this is the Qadiani belief. And if you look it up, in, in shrimp, some species of shrimp are hermaphrodite, and they can change gender, you know, whatever. That's, a, that's shrimp. That's not humans. You know, humans... 
can't even have babies with monkeys. It's not allowed. It's a stop sign. You know, same thing. A tiger and a liger can have a child, but that child can't have other children. You know, same thing with a mule. You know, there's stop signs that Allah made, which disprove evolution, but that's a different uh, a topic altogether. So those are my final notes, brother. And over to you. Sorry, yeah. just a, uh, uh, what's the evidence that he was abusing uh, substances? So you mentioned opium, you mentioned alcohol, because, you know, uh, in psychiatry, one of the causes of a psychotic illness is uh, substance abuse. So we know pe people who smoke cannabis and who uh, use uh, illicit substances, their, their mental health can be affected um, and they can develop a psychotic illness. So, Dr. Sayyid, uh, have you come across any references of uh, Mirza yeah, using... Yeah, I have got the references. Uh, I yeah. have got the reference of Zud Jameish. I can pull it out later on for you. Okay. And okay. I want to tell you one of the incidents his son has written in Siratul Mahdi as well. Okay. Sorry, now just before you it. do that, just before you do that, I wanted to clarify one thing. I mentioned a hadith earlier about uh, the mother being displeased. I've just checked it. Actually, uh, it was in... It's a fabrication. It was deleted from Musnad of Imam Ahmed by Imam Ahmed uh, since it was narrated by uh, Faid ibn uh, Abdurrahman and, uh, who was an ab abandoned narrator. So it's not correct to attribute it to Imam Ahmed uh, as pointed out by Sheikh Al-Albani. So just wanted to make that clarification that actually it was a, a weak or fabricated hadith. about. But the point is we know that this, the status of parents. Uh, Dr. Sayyid, please carry on. Now, in Sirat al-Mahdi, there is one incident, and I've got a reference to it as well. Yeah. One day, Mirza Qadiani vomited blood, lots of blood, okay. and fainted. And the doctor was called. He was an English doctor. He came round, and he said, whispered in the ear of one of the attendants who was there, probably Malvi Abdul Kareem or somebody, and he said, that in this age, he should not take certain things and then they omit what it was. And he said he should take a rest and the possibility is he may not survive these episodes if it happens again. Yes. Now we know that he used to drink excessive alcohol. Hematemesis. We have the letters he has written for, to his people, to his friends, who yes. used to go and buy it from the plumber shop on Mall Road in Lahore. Yes. He used to insist that bring the tonic wine for me, but we have got the references that he had abused other type of alcohol as well. Yes. Yes. The people who drink alcohol for a long time, they either have the gas gastric yeah. erosion or esophageal yeah. varices. Correct. And this story described in Sirat ul Mahdi is typical of that. Yeah. Either gastric erosion after excessive alcohol, which I don't believe it was true, it was more likely that he had, he didn't live long after that incident, right. and uh, more likely that he had some varices of second or third degree. And this whole story is a testimony of the fact on the medical criteria that he abused alcohol for at least 20, 30 years in his life. That's one thing. The other thing I can bring that reference as well, that in Tarikh-e Ahmadiyat, who is written by one of the Dost Muhammad Shahid Nam, uh, the, is the name of the man who wrote that. He writes in his Tarikh-e Ahmadiyat that Mirza Qadiani, when he came from Sialkot, he used yeah. to go outside Qadiani in a darga, you know, where somebody was buried, and yeah. used to drink that bhang and chest, you know, they just do something and then it gives you the same feeling as the alcohol. And he used yeah. to do it for years. And he writes that he used to do it and spend time with... Uh, I, I also, uh, in a reference, there's a name of the person who used to come and visit him back in his house as well. So he yeah. has abused alcohol, opium, all sorts of drugs for a long time which is probably the, one of the major contributing factors because of what he has written in his books. But yes, uh, yes. one thing you would know that now when we examine our uh, research students in particular, anybody who writes the dissertation or a thesis, we ask them to upload on a plagiarism site. Yes, yes, correct. And we don't accept that document if it is more than 25%.
Yeah, there's a there's a um, it, equation, isn't there? Yeah. Okay. Yes. So yeah. if it exceed twenty or twenty five, it depends on the university you are appearing yeah. from. Uh, we reject it. We don't even bother to read it. Correct. Mirza plagiarism was seventy eight point something percent. <laughs> Where did he plagiarize from? Uh, from Baha'i literature, from the books of uh, Muslim scholars. You know, they, you will find a mixture of them. Kadi, you, you know, on one side, I, I'll tell you, he's a poet. And in Quran, in Surah Al-Shura, it says, those who follow the poets are yeah. misled people. Yes, yes. Right? Yes. And uh, the look, on one hand, it says, I, I tell Kadi, and he's the plain thing. He's, listen to his poetry. Wo peshwa humara, jisse hai noor sara. Naam uska hai Muhammad, dilbar mera yahi hai. Auron mein khub tar hai, khubi mein hai kamar hai. Lekas khudai bartar, khairul bara yahi hai. Now it sounds like that somebody who is in love with my, our Prophet Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is writing this. Okay? The one who will write this kind of poem, this was written for him by somebody else named Qadi Akmal. So he published with his name. He yeah. used to give him a rough thing and he used to make it look good. Uh, and now look at the uh, other end of his poetry. Das se karwa chuki hai zana lekin paak daman abhi bichari hai. You know, he is saying, and this is a same long poetry. I can, I, it's very hard to read that. And he yeah. has described prayer on six pages telling people that if you want to have the ultimate experience of prayer, it's just like having a sex with the woman. Astaghfirullah. I can show you right now those pages if you like. Subhanallah. He was, he was sick. He was sick. Very sick, man. Mm -hmm. I would say... I mean, I'm not here to offend any Qadiani. Honestly, 90% of the Qadianis don't know what the Mirza yes, was exactly. and what they, he has written. Yeah, yeah, I'm exactly. just here to show him the right path, whether they accept it or not. It's entirely up to them. No, any rational, any rational person would, uh, would think about like what's going on. SubhanAllah. I mean, you know, uh, I'd like if, if in the audience, if there's a Qadiani medical doctor, psychiatrist, any medical doctor, I'd like them to come on and challenge our uh, <laughs> our diagnosis. I mean, subhanAllah, it's so clear. Correct, uh, Dr. Sayyid. I mean, even a medical student can tell you this guy had a mental Absolutely. illness. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's it's clear. I mean, he himself is saying I'm, I'm mentally ill. Yes. And, and another thing I just uh, thought of, uh, you guys were mentioning, you know, these episodes where he was shaking and falling down. Somebody who is a chronic alcoholic has issues with their cerebellum. They have cerebellar ataxia. So they cannot, you know, they cannot walk straight. They will have imbalance and issues with their gait. So subhanAllah, that fits as well that if he was abusing alcohol and illicit substances for years, that would affect his physical health in terms of his mobility and stability. And, you know, these episodes that you described, Dr. Sayyid, through his writings. I have the exact examples of what you have said. Even when he used to eat the bread, he will eat some and then he will leave on site in little, little pieces of bread. And he, yeah. then he would tell people, you know, one of the signs of schizophrenia is loss of taste and other sensations. Yeah. And he has written in his book that when I eat food, I can't tell what, what I have eaten. He can't tell what was the food. So, <sighs> Subhanallah. So okay. Uh, your comments yeah. today. I'm so glad that you invited me, and I had another opinion. Uh, Kadianis usually say I I over exaggerate the diagnosis. I tell them I underestimate the diagnosis. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Let me just uh, show you one thing again. Bear, bear with me. Yeah, and in the meantime, yeah. I I wanted to talk about one one more story. Mirza Malaman had a follower called Yar Muhammad. Okay. And this Yad Muhammad during prayers. Remember, Mr. Muhammad didn't lead the prayer, but he would stand up by the Imam to the right of the Imam, which is weird. Like, why are you there? 
right? Like, like yeah. are you a kid or something? But he's there. He had a follower who would jump lines and and stroke him during prayers. What? And it was very normal. Mirza Glam Ahmed had a follower who would, during Salah, would jump lines to go from the back to the front, get behind the Mirza Glam Ahmed and grope him and stroke him. Astaghfirullah. And this was very normal. They, they'd they say, they'd have someone stop Baska, the Baska, then he'd do it again. Baska, yeah. the Baska, then he'd do it again. So, yeah. So, so uh, this is, where's the reference for this, uh, Bashir? Um, I'll, I'll put it in the chat here in just a sec. It, it's the famous story of uh, Yad Muhammad, who, who they tried to discredit and say he was crazy later on. Right, right. And I just posted it in the public chat, Yad Muhammad. These guys know it. I even posted it on TikTok. The current Halifa admitted that some guy was so crazy that he admitted to the story. Um, so, yeah. And in the private chat, the, uh, they're, they're asking when are they going to be allowed in, brother. Yeah, yeah. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, shortly, inshallah. I just wanted to show you, Dr. Sayed, one second. Um, because it is quite a detailed presentation. So anybody who wants to uh, see it in detail, uh, they can... See the stream um, on Hamza's Den that I did, I think, in June. Um, but this is like, so for the Qadianis, I would recommend they watch it because, so here, uh, again, what is a hallucination? What is a delusion? It's very clear. Um, what is psychosis? Uh, it's a symptom that often accompanies serious mental illness like schizophrenia, schizoaffective disorder, bipolar disorder. So what does it involve? It involves here loss of contact with reality, such as hallucinations seeing or hearing things that others do not or delusions beliefs that are not based in reality i mean it's very clear that mirza uh, kind of had this uh, these symptoms right again uh, we already covered this i just wanted to show you so here on this slide like i mentioned what are the causes of psychosis here misuse of alcohol prescription medications or recreational drugs so obviously he we know from from the references that he was abusing Drugs. So this could have been a causative factor for him to develop a, a psychotic illness, right? Um, okay, let me just move forward. I wanted to show you. So this is what he was saying, Dr. Sayed, positive symptoms, negative symptoms, cognitive symptoms, you know, kind of bizarre behavior. So he, you gave many examples from, from the references of him exhibiting bizarre behavior, um, him having hallucinations and delusions. Um, and subhanAllah, it's very clear about that. Uh, let me go forward. Um, let me just show you something. Okay, so there's uh, there's many videos. So here, what happens if you don't treat a mental illness? So the mental state becomes worse. And it seems like from what you guys are saying, um, as he got older, you know, his physical and mental state became worse because obviously he wasn't having any treatment. Okay. Um, there's other issues about non-treatment. Um, here, so this is an important slide. So what happens, this is an onset phase of psychosis. So on the um, x-axis, you have time, and on the y-axis, you have symptom severity. So there's a period, what we call the prodrome. This is a period where basically people start exhibiting bizarre behavior and bizarre beliefs. Um, and then at this stage, this is where somebody becomes fully psychotic, okay? And here, when you have treatment, the symptom severity goes down, okay? So obviously, you've given many examples of Mirza as he, over the years, he was having this prodromal phase of psychotic symptoms, which then went into full-blown psychosis in terms of delusions and hallucinations. Um, so it's very interesting what you guys, uh, I mean, uh, Dr. Sayed gives direct references. So the Qadianis out there, please uh, do look into this in terms of the mental illness aspect, uh, because it's very clear. That you know he he was suffering uh, from from mental illness, um, and there, there's other uh, slides that are important as well uh, in terms of like you know um, epilepsy. I mean, is there any evidence, uh, Doctor Sayed, that he had an epileptic? Uh, any no, epileptic there's no direct evidence okay. of a diagnosis okay. of epilepsy. Actually, okay. the okay. epilepsy has got two forms of diagnosis nowadays in medicine. Yes, one is the clinical diagnosis and yes. the description of signs and Correct. symptoms. Correct. And he never exhibited that he, the biting of tongue is one of the paramount yeah, yeah. importance in yeah, here you have the, epilepsies. Yeah, here we have the 
epilepsy yeah, on the slides. Yes. Okay. And he mm -hmm. never, no one ever documented the, he had a tongue bite and he used to pass the urine anyway. But yes. there is no evidence that during the attack will be the only time he will be incontinent of urine. He was incontinent okay. all the time. Okay. Okay. Um, so here, for example, on this slide, we have common symptoms of during a seizure. So you have loss of awareness, a blackout, confused, feeling spacey, periods of forgetfulness or memory lapses, distracted daydreaming, sounds maybe strange or different, unusual tastes, loss of vision or unable to see. So there's something, uh, uh, Dr. Sayed, you know, temporal lobe epilepsy. Temporal lobe epilepsy, basically, uh, people can suffer from hallucinations. Yes, so, absolutely. But yeah. They are called the déjà vu phenomena, correct, and uh, the other similar kind of things. They find themselves in places where they don't belong, and they find find it familiar. Uh, déjà vu and yame you. Yes, correct, correct. Yeah. So okay. he doesn't describe exactly, and there might be a factor of it. I mean, yeah. I'm, I, uh, no one has ever properly examined him. We are of making course. interpretation from yeah, his writing. Yeah, of course. From, yeah. I mean, one of the things that just came to my head, Dr. Sayed, he was an alcoholic, so you can have withdrawal seizures. So Absolutely. Somebody, yeah. he, did, so he, he did have yeah. withdrawal seizures. I fully agree with you. Yeah. That's how yeah. withdrawal seizures happen. We exactly. treat the withdrawal seizures with the same medication as we treat the epilepsy. Yeah. However, we tell them that there is, it won't go beyond that treatment, the best thing is to stop the alcohol. Of course, yeah. Hopefully, the withdrawal seizures will stop. Yes, yes. Excellent. Um, Bashir, are you there? So there's uh, somebody but, uh, called, yeah, there's somebody called Tel Coleman. Do you know, do you know who that is? Yeah, yeah. Is it Ahmadi uh, person? I think or? it's ex Ahmadi. he's ex Ahmadi. Should I, okay, Bismillah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even, for, even for Ahmadi, let him in. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, that's the whole point. We want, we want care for you. So, um, please. Let uh, everyone join. in. Now we. Yeah, are everybody's, for... everybody's welcome. So I think, inshallah, that was good. We did, uh, oh, subhanallah, almost two hours talking about mental illness, talking about symptoms, and making cross-referencing from his writings. So I think, mashallah, I think this was a brilliant uh, introduction because I haven't. I know you've mentioned uh, references in terms of PhD thesis, but in this format, uh, as a stream, I think this is the first time somebody's kind of gone into such a detail uh, defining what is mental illness, what is a delusion, what's a hallucination, and how Mirza had had those symptoms. So I think uh, I think it's been very useful. Alhamdulillah. Okay, Bismillah. Let's open the floor. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as -salam. How are you guys? Alhamdulillah. Telco man, welcome. Okay, first of all, Dr. Said, Holy Spirit, big fan. I've been watching you for a very long time, so. Thank you. Thank you for all you do, and Pashir, me and you go way back, and Abu Isa, nice to meet you. Jazakallah khair. Um, <clears throat> the one question I had was, um, through the children of Mirza Ghulam Ahmed and his books, do his kids show any sign of mental disorder? And if so, is it passed on to generations? Is that a thing? So I'll answer the second part of your question. Within mental health, a lot of the conditions, there is a genetic component. Um, so we say hereditary. So things like bipolar disorder, even psychosis, um, we know from uh, research studies that if you have a mental illness, a family member is at a higher risk. It doesn't mean that every single family member, child, or you know, a grandchild will have that illness, but there's a higher risk. Um, so yes, absolutely, there is a, a genetic component to most mental illnesses. Uh, now, uh, Bashir, the first part of his question about his kids. Yeah, so... Uh... <laughs> Uh, if an infant takes opium every day for like six months, what are they going to do be when they grow up? Mm. So, so Mirza Ghulam Ahmed's son, the guy that became the second Khalifa, he admits to have been giving, to have been fed raw opium, not mixed in the medicine, raw opium. He said he, he couldn't read. He was blind. He didn't matriculate. He had all these problems, mental problems. He grew up and be, became a monster. So there it is. <laughs> you know, I can I, tell you the Mirza Ghulam Qadiani's family history. Mirza Ghulam yeah. Qadiani was born to a man called Ghulam Murtaza, who had five children. One girl was died when she was few months old. One boy died when he was a year and a half old. 
टू बॉयज सर्वाइव वन मिर्जा गुलाम कादियानी गुलाम एंड मिर्जा अब्दुल कादर हिज एल्डर ब्रदर हु डाइड इन 1883 व्हाट द कादियानी डस नॉट टॉक अबाउट इज द सिस्टर ऑफ दीस टू ब्रदर कॉल्ड मुराद बीबी शी वाज डायग्नोज्ड मेंटली इल सुभान एंड शी वाज स्किज़ोफ्रेनिक सुभान एंड शी हैड अ डिवोर्स एज अ रिजल्ट ऑफ इट एंड लाइक मिर्जा कादियानी शी वाज इनफर्टाइल and uh, you are a psychiatrist i yes. mean it's written in the psychiatry documents and i have yes. put the reference on my youtube channel that yes. those who are schizophrenic the risk of having diabetes and infertility is far higher than any other group correct correct and, yes and he had all these complications and in his children fazal had some mental problem you look at mm. his behavior yes his behavior was very much different than the mirza sultan ahmed he right. actually divorced his wife after mirza said you know uh, mamdi begum probably you know you need to know the man yeah. far more than what we have just discussed <laughs> <laughs> and because of mamdi begum uh, he asked he his both his children to divorce their wives Yeah, he threatened his kids, divorce or yes. yes. So Mirza Fazal did, and uh, the poor guy. Honestly, I have got all my sympathy for this Mirza Fazal. He died in his life in 1905. Yes, and he had the symptoms of psychiatric illness as well. He didn't study very well. The older son, Sultan Ahmed, retired as a deputy commissioner, and he was right. a very senior civil servant. and actually to prove mirza false he has got a big hand you know he had the mamdi begum married to one of his friend in patti which is near lahore and made all his ilhams and by his blow in the air if mirza sultan wasn't born the whole literature will be far more smoother than it is now so Allah. that's the family is and why the other people like mirza bashir are not overt schizophrenic because when mirza married nusrat jahan begum he was infertile and impotent erectile impotence he described that's written in his writing in in own book actually when he was going there for marriage one of his disciple so called evil disciple said to him mirza ji you are going for marriage and i have been bringing the impotence medication for you for last several years you had no relation with your first wife for 23 years you know you are unfit for marriage you know what the mirza said he said the god says go and i go <laughs> and he married 16 year old and the disciple said oh what you will do tonight then he said we will see <laughs> and he goes up next No, no. It's all documents. We can give you, show you the his writing. It is written in the, the books. And uh, he woke up next morning, and he said to him, "Let's go for a walk." So the disciple said, "During on the way, I asked him, Mirza Ji, what happened last night?" He said, "God saved me." He said, "How?" He said, "Begum Sahiba started having periods again." Subhanallah. Subhanallah. No, 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 we know all about Mirza. You know this. Yeah. So, guys, um, tell Kumar. I don't know if you can see my. I shared my screen. Can you see? Yeah. yeah. So this is the, the, the schizophrenia and, and heredity. So the risk of uh, schizophrenia. So having a first degree relative with schizophrenia is one of the greatest risks for the disorder. Okay. So while the risk is one percent in the general population, so out of a hundred people, the risk of schizophrenia is one out of a hundred. Having a first degree relative, so that means a brother. Uh, a yeah. mother or father Blood such as a parent or sibling increases the risk to 10% so it goes up oh. by tenfold from 1% to 10% okay the risk jumps to 50% if both parents have been diagnosed with schizophrenia while the risk is 40 to 65% if an identical twin has been diagnosed with the condition so in denmark in 2017 they conducted a study uh, on over 30000 twins and the heritability of schizophrenia was at 79% okay So you can no, no, no. see there's a there's a strong genetic uh, component uh, to schizophrenia, uh, which could explain some of, yeah some of the things yeah. Just like Doctor Sayed, I have one more uh, question for you. 
But yes, you, you finish it. You finish it. Uh, you were going to say something. Yeah, I want to add one thing that the Khalifa from the Nusrat Jahan, 10 children born in 12, 15 years, none of them is a child of Mirza Qadiani, as he yeah. writes in his book. That's yeah. why they haven't inherited that degree of madness which would have come from Mirza, which okay. came to Fazal. Yes. So uh, that, that, that actually testifies that if they were the real children of Mirza Ghulam Qadiani, one of them had to be barking mad. <laughs> but none of them was that degree of schizophrenic. Although I can tell you, uh, these so called children, Mirza Bashiruddin, um, Bashiruddin Mahmood, used to have sex with his own daughters, all of them, Stop which is me. documented in Justice Munir's diary. And I won't waste the time because that's not the topic of this stream today. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I just wanted to make clear that why these. Uh, children from Nusrat Jahan hasn't got such a serious degree of schizophrenia as Mirza Ghulam Qadiani children like Fazal inherited. Yes, yes. I mean, subhanAllah, it's, it's crazy. Uh, the more you dig into it, his life and his family's life, the, the more it becomes, he gets exposed, subhanAllah. I don't know like how people follow this guy. I don't know. Honestly, it's a mystery, but... I think, like you said, most people are not aware of these things. I'll tell you as an oh, expert. No. They're, they're Majority aware. isn't aware. Sorry, tell man. I said I was going to say, I'll tell you an, as an ex MD, nobody is aware. Really? They don't point you to the books. They hide the books. They Quran and Hadith, Quran and Hadith, but they never answer to the books. SubhanAllah, SubhanAllah. I, I, I have another question for Dr. Sayyid, Holy Spirit, if, if that's okay. Please, yeah, carry on. Um. So there was an experience that Mirza Ghulam had with his daughter where he accidentally gave her some sort of um, oil or medicine or something and killed her, I think. Um, did uh, his mental disorder contribute to that, that whole uh, experience? Now, I will tell you, Dr. Abu Isa, this incident is documented in Siratul Mahdi and other yes. books. Mm -hmm. He had a two or three year old daughter and he was outside Qadian. And one night she was unwell or something. She woke up in the middle of the night and Mirza Ghulam Qadiani gave him some oil or something which was very detrimental. And ultimately that child died. And uh, I think he was mentally ill. And this, there is a contribution of his mental illness in this incident as well. Because yeah. no one gives, he was supposed to be a Hakim, a trained in medicine of that time. Yes. He shouldn't have done this. But why did yeah. he do that? The Qadiani actually tried to polish this event. The, the, the references we give are from Qadiani books. I have got the references from non Qadiani books as well. And I can yes. tell you, Dr. Abu Isa you won't be able to stomach those books what is written by Muslims about them. SubhanAllah. 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 Yeah. Okay, Talkoman, anything else you wanted to add? No, JazakAllah. Keep oh, up the yeah. good work and we'll talk soon, inshallah. JazakAllah khair. Allah bless you. Assalamu alaikum. Where are the Qadianis, man? They're not showing up. They won't show up. <laughs> where's Where's this Razi guy and all these guys who come on challenging uh, Adnan? Exactly. This Ahmed, this Ahmed guy, I don't know who he is. He's always Rahim very Rahim He's always a... no, no, brother. If that's their scholars, come on, brother. They're, they're all young guys in their 20s. These are your scholars? Where are the scholars who are my... I'm like 40-something. Where, where yeah. are those guys? Where are the 60, 60 years old plus? Where's that generation? Where's the 50 plus generation? There are no scholars. Yeah. You know, the, the Qadianis actually don't come where I go. Because in the <laughs> beginning... No, 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 I'm telling you the... Yeah. Oh, we lost. Where's he gone? Oh, he, he must have hit the button on accident. <laughs> Dr. Sayed, please join back. <laughs> so I, let, let me tell you about Dr. Sayed. Hey, let me play something. Okay, 
he explained yeah. how Mirza fell and all that happened. You got to hear it. Are you ready? Oh, here he is. Okay. Sorry, Dr. Sayed. What? <laughs> Sorry, I don't know what happened. Yes, okay. The Qadianis, when I came in the beginning, it's not long ago. It's about a year and a half ago. I first time came because of the COVID. I had the time. And <laughs> they used to come and they used to shower abuse on me, calling me Abu Jail and this and that. Well, and they used to call you Walad al-Haram? <laughs> no. Uh, okay. they, 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 that's what the Mirza called everybody yeah, else. This, this, is what, this is what Mirza used to call his opponents who didn't believe that he was a prophet Walud al-Haram. And no, no. Al that's what yeah. the Adnan was having a discussion yes, yes, with in speaker's them. Corner, yes. Zuriyatul Bagaya. That's what yes. mm, the discussion started and, in. The and and uh, this one of one of them was saying, "Oh no, it doesn't mean the son of a prostitute. It, it has other meanings." And haram zada and all, all these kind of uh, vulgar uh, words that they use. Yeah. Do you want to share another screen? If I show you that one, Welcome. just give give me a little yeah. moment. You talk to Shadi, and I'll okay. pull out that reference. Bashir, you wanted to show a video. Oh, oh, okay. Look, look. Uh, uh, Doctor saying the Holy Spirit doesn't know this, but he has a lot of ex-amnies. When he explained how Mirza fell, he saw the black thing. <laughs> We've been playing this audio in the back channel and the back chat for months. Can I play it real quick? Hold on, hold on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. okay Shaji, this... you have kept my old recording. <laughs> <laughs> this is epic. It went around the world. Okay. We it's gone here. viral. It's gone viral. Yeah, brother. I'm about to put it on TikTok here in a little bit. <laughs> But hey, uh, uh, Mirza Glam Ahmed and uh, Brother Adnan found this. Mirza Glam Ahmed wrote, anyone who doesn't appreciate the British government is a harami. <laughs> you know what I mean? We hadn't caught that. I had never heard that one, you know? Yeah. Uh, well, the haram, there's another quote in 1906, a chashma masihi. I hadn't caught it. You know why? Because in the English, they translated it as misbegotten. <laughs> Something uh, like that. Misbegotten. You know, Bro, it make a dude look it up. Misbegotten. Let me look. Let me look it up. Okay. Oh. Okay. How'd you get that, bro? You got, you know what I mean? Where did you get that word from, bro? You know. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. So, so my goal has been to take all the Urdu Arabic sources and get them into English, and then yeah, a situation where anyone, you know, because I'm my, I don't want to say my customer base, but. My uh, core audience is young Amdis who can't read Urdu. They can barely understand Arabic. So if yeah. that's the core audience, I brought the material into English for them, you know, with transliterations to yes. where we can see. So, so yeah. And uh, Dr. Say, say Holy Spirit, are you ready? Yes, yes. Share right. this screen, please. Okay. One second. Bismillah. There you go. Now I'm going to show you the... You see, the Qadianis are so dishonest people, which are unbelievably dishonest. Uh, in one of their channel, Real Islam or whatever he calls himself, uh, he is saying that, and I can show you a book as well, which is called the Talimi Pocket Book. They straight go to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Quran and blame things on Astaghfirullah on those things. And they say Zuriyatul Bagaya does not mean the prostitutes. Right? And yeah. they have been showing this uh, Adnan Saab's uh, one of their his discussion with Noonan. Yeah, Ibrahim Noonan. Yes, the Irish yeah. guy. So yeah. I, I'll show you those things so you know what the Mirza actually has written. Yes. And this is one of the reference I want to show to the Qadianis. Uh, you see, I have got the references from Quran as well. Mashallah. That And do not approach immoralities, what is apparent of them and what's concealed. Right? Yes. Uh, Surah Inam. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Surah Inam. 
Now, Mirza writes here, you can see that the reference is here. Let me see. It's Khazain volume 19 and page 11, Kishti No. And if you look at the end of the book, you will see in Urdu he says, Or kisi ko gali mat do, go wo gali deta ho. Do not use an abusive word for anybody, even if he abuses you. That's Mirza. He has okay. got contradiction on everything. Now, this is volume 19. And let me show you the Khazain volume 19, page 236. Muwahib ur Rahman is the name of the book. And here you see what he says here. Uh, it will be very amazing. Fama ruddattu alayhim jawabahum. In his Arabic is very broken. Waqat sabbuni bekulle sabbin fama ruddattu alayhim jawabahum. Which means I have never abused anybody in response to his abusive language. Allahu Akbar. That's Mirza's statement. Yes. Now look next to it. He claims that let's look at the reference as well first. I'm telling that the man is mentally ill thoroughly. <laughs> it's a Khazain volume 14, page 80. Najmul Huda is the name of the book. It says, or Siraf Ham Gali Dene Walunko Gali. He just a moment ago I showed you, he said, I never abused anybody in my life. Yes, yes. Here he is saying, I only use abusive language for the people who abuse me so that I return the favor. Ta in ke ki padasho, so that I could punish them because of their language. Subhanallah. Now, now look what he says. This is the page. Uh, what was his name? Adnan. Adnan Rashid. He was talking yes. about this page. Yes. It is in Khazain volume 5. The book of the name is Ayna Kamalat Islam. Yes. yes. And page 548. It says, Illa, except Zuriyatul Bagaya, the children of prostitute, Allah Deena Khatam Allahu Ala Kulubahim, Fahum La Yak Baloon. You know, he is using a verse of Quran. Do you see the insult he is inflicting on Quran? This is in Surah Al-Baqarah. It's a part of that verse. Yes. And he says, these are the people who have a seal on their heart and they will never accept. Now, he calls, he, he, says, calls them, he calls them children of prostitutes. Yes. Uh, now, in their Talimi pocket book, who is written, which is written by a chap called Abdur Rahman, and that's the whole knowledge of Qadiani to uh, come and discuss with us. He says it does not mean, it means the unfaithful woman. <laughs> now, I want to tell Qadiani one thing. This is semantics. Semantics, yeah. they're playing uh, with words. Yes. Yeah. The other thing, they confuse it with the people who have the sex outside marriage, what we call zana. Yeah. Adult, uh, zana uh, adult, is adult not adult equivalent adult. to prostitute. Correct. Zana people do, zaniya does the act to have a pleasure outside Correct. the wedding lock. Correct. Whereas prostitute doesn't do that. Prostitutes are, uh, this is their business. Business. Now, bhaya is the word used in Quran as well. Yes. وَمَا كَانَتْ أُمَّوْ كِي بَغِيَّةِ When the Maryam alayhi salatu wa salam brought the Isa alayhi salam, yeah, they, this was the allegation they made against her. That you, your mother was not a bad woman, isn't it? Yes. Now, what the Mirza, how Mirza translated, that's what I want to show you. Now, look at the translation of Mirza. I will show you those references. Now, this is the... Volume 23, this is March 1934. It is Al-Fazl newspaper and Mirza Mahmood Friday sermon. 
एंड आई हैव लास्ट ए पार्ट ऑफ इट इट से जुरियातुल बगाया के मानी है बेवफा लोगों के तरीकों पर चलने वाला इट मींस अनफेथफुल या बेवफा औरतों के तरीक पर चलने वाले लोग बेवफा औरतें या जमातें पीपल और द्लासेस हु आर नॉट फेथफुल बगाया के मानी बदकार औरत के भी हैं द प्रोस्टिट्यूट राइट नाउ लुक व्हाट द मिर्जा ट्रांसलेट बगाया दैट्स व्हाट द कादियानी आर नॉट शोइंग टू एनी वन आफ्टर दिस इज लेट्स लुक एट द रेफरेंस हियर I did tag uh, Adnan uh, on Twitter so I don't know I know he's a very busy guy it would have been good if he could have joined us yeah but, and yeah. look at this this is Khazain volume 16 page 49 khutbah ilhamia it says fame khutbah it's it's not a friday sermon that's if any kadi anything it says ila raksul baqaya raks zanan bazari You tell me who is Zanan Bazari mean prostitute? Yeah. Bazari orton ke raks. That is how the Mirza translate the word bagaya, a prostitute, a Bazari orat, right? Yes. And yeah. and other reference from Mirza Kadiani, Khazain volume sixteen page three seventy one. Lagja to Noor is the name of the book, mm. and you see. he has got the word bagaya in this tilkal bagaya and in persian he like writes zan hai zaniya not those who say zan hai zaniya mean the prostitute who have sex for money yes they are called zan hai zaniya and this is the meaning of bagaya by mirza qadiani okay if the qadiani don't settle for this Here is another reference, Khazain, Volume Eight, Page One Sixty Three. Book name is Nurul Haq Al Hissa Tul Ula. And here is another Zuriya Tul Bagaya. Walaysa man Zuriya Tul Bagaya, or Khrab Orto, wa Naslul Dajjal or Dajjal ki Nasl. Subhanallah, Subhanallah. Right, everywhere and. Mirza has used bagaya. He has used it in the meaning of a prostitute. Yes. Now, if a kadiani comes to you and say it means unfaithful woman, Mirza never wrote unfaithful woman. Yeah. Well, what, what, is it, what, what is it translated in the English, uh, Bashir? Shaji, are you there? Yes, in sir. English, what what is the translation that they write? Uh, what book is this? I'm sorry. Uh, go to the top left so I can see the name of the book. I can't see the name of the book. No, no, I can show you the name of the books. I I I think I have to download the English versions. It's the volume you're... eight one, Nurul uh, Hakista. Hak. Yeah. What part of it? it uh, what part is it? A uh, hey. first volume. First of all, yeah, it's on the blog, brother. The, uh, this quote is there. Yeah. No, no, but what in English? What did he? What did? What did they translate it as? That book's not in English. Oh, okay, okay. Lajit Anur, the one he quoted a few a minute earlier, is in English, and I was, I was going to go check because 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 I wasn't aware of that either. Okay. You know, the one thing I can tell you about the English translation of Kadianis. it is just like they have mistranslated quran they have mistranslated mirza's books and that's the one reason that i keep the original writing of mirza yes, kadian yes yeah, yes that right. whatever you have done the translation that's what the mirza is saying this zuriyatul bagaya me nowhere yes. he has translated this word at least 5 times in his writings at least 5 times that's the times i have seen it and none of the places he says it means the unfaithful every time he says these are the women who do the sex profession for money yes prostitutes yeah. prostitutes zanaizania that's the word he, he yeah. dr sayed it makes sense if if he, if he was visiting the red light district in lahore 
uh, his preoccupation with prostitutes. You know, psychologically, if you spend a lot of time doing something, you will become preoccupied with that in terms of your speech, in terms of your writing. Subhanallah. Uh, I've yeah. got another reference. And yeah. uh, uh, let me just say, uh, so we're assuming that he went to the red light district. We don't have that. I mean, he was right there. He was so close to it. Where else could okay. he spend so much money, you know? Okay. So we, we don't know for sure. Okay. Yeah. In, in terms of exactly where he went, I mean, we're no. quite sure, you know. Shadi, in, that's from Qadiani book we are talking about. Yeah. From the book of Muslims, we do have the reference and evidence and the witnesses who said he went there. Yeah. And right? even, uh, yeah, even Dr. Sayed, even if the, if you say unfaithful woman would you like somebody to say that to your wife or your mother that your mother is unfaithful absolutely or not i mean subhanallah it's, it's not much better to say unfaithful woman what does that mean right right and and let, let me clarify so so uh a Razi found a reference from 1907 where mirza glam Ahmed, so remember he cussed at everyone his whole life cuss 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 it's whatever then he started yeah. getting uh he went to court for defamation in 1904. okay, okay. and uh, all of his followers were like, hey, be careful what you say. Someone else could sue you too. Remember, remember that um, that was the only court case that he lost and he won on appeal. So uh, right. so he immediately, in 1907, there's a new reference and we checked it out. In 1907, he redefined what that word meant for legal purposes in case he went to court. So okay. 15 years later, this is not, that's like, brother, if I cuss at you today, and then 10 years later, I say, I, I say 15 years, I don't even say it to you. I, I publish an announcement. Anytime I said this cuss word, it only meant evil or someone bad. That's that's <laughs> a cop out. That's a cop out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and there is another I, reference. Yeah. Uh, Mirza Qadiani used to go to Lahore and he bought a property in Brandreth Road. Uh, which is between Lakshmi Chowk and King Edward Medical College and Mayo Hospital. That road links these two areas. Okay. However, he would prefer staying with an other friend of him whose house was in red light area. Was well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, we uh, we know better. We know he used to go there all the time later, so... He knows where to go. He he knows exactly where to go. Well, I mean, th this is why, on a serious note, this is why all his writings are full with these references. Uh, if somebody's spending all their time in a particular area in a particular with a particular type of woman, he's gonna write about that. And you know, Subhanallah. One last reference, if you have a time, I want yes, of to course. share with you. And you talk to Shadi, and I'll pull out that reference. I want to show you that, and I want your opinion because you are a consultant psychiatrist. Am I right? Yes, I am a consultant psychiatrist, yes. Yes. Uh, and doctors don't go beyond that in their clinical practice. Consultant is the top grade. Yes, yes. So, no yeah, just for people who don't know, alhamdulillah, I, uh, I went to Oxford for medical school, uh, Worcester College. I did my training in uh, Manchester. Uh, I worked as a consultant in, in the UK and I moved to Qatar seven years ago. So I'm now working as a senior consultant here. And I think Dr. Sayed is also a consultant. Uh, yeah, uh, <clears throat> while uh, Dr. Sayed, the Holy Spirit, is looking for that, can you pull up that quote from uh, Lajat Noor again so I can find it in the, in the English? What's some of the keywords that were in that quote so I can look for it? Now, Lajat Noor is an interesting book. Because it was published in like 1920 or something like that. It's the it's the most posthumous book that they attribute to MGA. It was published. Oh well, no, they they say it was published in 1910. So there, there's another one. I think Minana Rahman is like 1922. But yeah, 1910. I need to add this to my collection. Who can pull that ref? Putting it out there. I even put it in a Telegram group. So can um can you pull up that quote again, uh, um Abuisa, uh, uh Lajat al Noor, if you remember it? Um, so Doctor Sayed was sharing it. Oh, he was sharing. Uh, it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, uh, I want you... to show you this page. I want to show you a few pages like that. You read them and give your opinion about the state of mind of a man who would write this. Sure. Can you see this? Uh, yeah. I'll just one second. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, 
I'll make it bigger for you, one page, and all the other pages are the same, so I won't make them bigger. So, okay. uh, give me a chance, I will make okay. it bigger. Take your time. Can you read that? La'ana, <laughs> la'ana, la'ana. Yeah, you, you see there's a number with them as yes. well. So he's sending curses, he's, he's cursing. And this is the reference, Khazayan volume 8, page 161, Nurul Haq Hissal Ula. Brother, he, he numbered them to a thousand. Who does that? No, who, who writes Lana a thousand times, puts it in their book and numbers it to make sure you get to Six a thousand. pages, one word. So this is, you um, know, number one. Yeah. Go you on. imagine a man sitting in the dark with a candle and writing one lana, two lana, three lana, four lana, five lana, and it Yani would have yeah. taken him the whole day or longer. He's he's making dhikr with lana. Subhanallah. You know, um, uh, Doctor Sayyid, I don't know if you remember in my presentation I showed you some writing of a schizophrenic, and Subhanallah, this looks exactly like <laughs> a, a sample of that writing. Yes, Both it is. Different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Yani, he's how many pages he's done uh, written this? This Latina? One thousand. Six. Six pages. Six and a. Okay. Six. And and, yeah. what, and what's what's when they translate this six pages? What do they tra translate it as? No, the book's not in English. <laughs> okay. No, no. I, I can tell you the Qadiani answer as well. There was one of their missionary. They call their Rahab. You know. Their okay. priests are called Murabi or missionaries. Murabi, yeah, Murabis, yes. Yeah. Morbi. One of their chief missionary, chief Murabi, who is the senior most in charge, he was giving the answer to that. He said, it's a prayer. The so Mirza good. was making a prayer to God. Yeah. What's wrong with it? I said, my dear, nothing wrong. I it's was only a, a proof of mental illness. He could have said in one line, one billion lana to you. Finish. Yeah, 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 yeah. What do you mean? What, what does he mean? By, yani, he's making a dua of lana. Yeah, he said lana is a dua. For, against who? I don't know. You know, the Qadianis come up with such a weird explanation. You, you, you know what term we use, uh, Dr. Sayyid? Mental gymnastics. Yes. And, and which, which, which other group does mental gymnastics? The Christians. When they try and explain the Trinity. Yeah, the, the Qadianis are worse among them. You know, the thing is, if you do not know what's the reality of Qadianiyat is, you have never read their books. Yes. Some of their funny arguments, you start thinking, maybe he is right because he is hiding. Like I told you, Bhagaya, in all yes. social media, I've seen their streams. They have not shown even once that the Mirza himself has translated the word. And he has translated it to the prostitute, Zan Hai Zania, yeah. and the word is not translated to the unfaithful people or classes. SubhanAllah. So the, uh, if yeah. four meanings are the same, fifth in the Arabic book should be the same. The Adnan made one mistake. Mm -hmm. He said to Nunan, this book is in Urdu, which was true. The, more than half of the book is in Urdu. But this yeah. particular page he was referring to was in Arabic, broken Arabic, and okay. there wasn't a translation with it. Okay. Uh, in the back chat, there's somebody called Dawan, and he seems to be quite derogatory towards you, Bashir. Do you know this guy? The one, D A one O N E. He's making, or he or she is making derogatory comments. Yeah, uh, put him in timeout. <laughs> throw him out. Throw him out. Like, <laughs> uh, uh, wh wh why don't you come onto the stream? You're just putting comments in the back chat. Yeah, bro. Who are you know? So, so these are the people that Ruzzy, Quorum, my brother's running around. His wife is 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 running around social media. There's, bro. They got a whole team against me, bro. You your know, brother, your own biological brother. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Three years ago, he he was he came on Twitter and he would not accept that I'm a Muslim. He couldn't accept it. It, it was too much. Shut him, shut him, Agi. Get chota para Muslim on you. You know what I mean, um, bro? It's been out of control, brother. My cousins, I, I I got a few cousins who 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 did these 
uh, nefarious tactics against me. You know what I mean? So, but uh, Dr. Say the Holy Spirit, can you pull up that quote from um, Legend of Noor and read it so I can find it in the English on live stream real quick and see? Oh, let's the Duriatul Bogaya one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see how they translated it. I, I, I just want to show it on because yeah, I yeah, know they I, did it wrong. I will, I will. Yeah, and uh, um, in the meantime, uh, Dr. Abuisa, yeah, brother, they've, they've tried exposés on me. They've tried, you name it, nothing worked. Um, Huram came out, he tried to criticize my Arabic, where me and him learned from the same teacher at the same time. We both had the same teacher. Our, our dad taught us, you know, it, it, it wasn't correct. It was somewhat correct, you know, but it was, you know, good enough. So, yeah. so, so everyone said, oh, is knowing Arabic a big thing for you guys? He said, yeah. So that's when everyone started analyzing their Halifa's Arabic. Allahu Akbar. If he can call it Arab, if he can call it Arabic, you go, bro. He can't say Ain, bro. You can't say the Ain. He acts like he's from the North Pole, and 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 they can't say Ain. You're from Pakistan. Isn't there an Ain in Urdu, or something similar? You know, yeah. I mean? you know, Urdu and Arabic are like very similar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, exactly. You can't say the Ain, bro. Uh, could you? Uh, Dr. Abu Isa, yes. could you share this, please? Yes. Yeah. It's the Khazain, volume 16, page 371, Lajja to Noor. Uh, can you read it for me so, um, so I can find some keywords and try to find it Khazan. in the name? I think the numbering on the book itself will be slightly different than the Khazain because Khazain has got the multiple books in them. Yeah, yeah. Just I, I just need a keyword, a, a really good keyword. Yeah, yeah. The keyword is... وَإِن فِي ذَلِكَ لَا آيَاتِ لِقَوْمِ يَتَدَبَّرُونَ I mean, he abuses the Qur'an, this Khabis Mirza. Oh, no, no, Qadianis, you can't say anything to me about this man. Yeah, brother, all I need is a keyword and I can find it in the English. And then let, Which keyword you want? Uh, where does he say uh, Ibn Bagaya? In, 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 oh, there. Oh, is Tilkal that Bagaya. Okay, can you read that sentence? And I'll, I'll see if there's a keyword in there. Bal yasiruna biroya tilkul bagaya. In Urdu, can you, can you give me that? Can you read it in Urdu? I no, it's in, Persian. in Persian and Arabic. It's in Arabic and Persian, yeah. In Persian, Farsi. okay. okay. Farsi. Okay. Farsi, Farsi, yeah. Badidan zan hai zanaya. I, I can't read the Persian, you know. Uh, Farsi, yeah. yeah Farsi. Okay, no worries. I'll, 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 I'll reconvene with you later and we'll find it in the English and, and add it. Okay. Yeah, Zan Haizani, I mean the prostitutes. SubhanAllah. Subhanallah. Okay, well, uh, the word um, prostitute is not in the English in that book. <laughs> no, no, no. Kadiani won't write it. Kadiani will write unfaithful women. I can tell you right now because that's how they argue about this particular word. They will discard the meanings, the Mirza Qadian. Actually, I'll tell you one thing, Dr. Isa, about this Mirza Qadiani and Qadiani today. Yes. The belief of Qadianis today are not exactly the beliefs of Mirza Qadiani. Okay. His so-called son, which was actually the son of Hakim Nuruddin, uh, the second uh, so-called Khalifa, Bashiruddin Mahmud, he made huge amount of amendments in the uh, beliefs of Mirza Qadiani. Today, Qadiani is following uh, mm. Shiruddin Mahmood uh, more than Mirza Ghulam Qadiani. Right. So there's a huge differences between the belief set of two people. And Qadiani are trying to put the Mirza Qadiani I, I, I'll, I'll give you one example. One day I went to Kadiani Temple. Do you want to know why? How did I know about Kadiani so much? Uh, I was just going to ask you your story. Were you, a, are no, you no, an no. ex-Kadiani? It's not a story, but I'll tell you what prompted me to read about them. You're not an ex-Kadiani, right? No, no, no. I've got nothing okay. to do with Kadiani. They, they <laughs> write me as an ex-Kadiani because no, no, my no. knowledge of Kadiani. Yeah. Have I ever said anything wrong about Kadiani? No, not that I can remember. And uh, let me stop you right there. The word prostitute occurs in Legend of Noor 24 times. Oh, is it? 
Yeah, in English, go. 20 in, it's, in English, it's translated as prostitute. Well, I don't know if that quote, but I, I just searched the word prostitute in Legend of Noor 24 times that word occurs in Legend of Noor. And that's Mirza's writing. You know, the reason I researched about when I was around 16 years old, I met Kadiani, one of the prominent Kadiani. Okay. And I thought that they were, you know, you know I thought that they said, oh, we are Muslims. I said, okay, that's fine. Anybody who calls himself Muslim is a Muslim for my yes. purpose. So yes. then they said, oh, these Muslims are bad. And, uh, and I said, what's the difference? They said that the uh, Isa al-Islam actually has come. And I thought, oh, that's a news to me. Have I missed him? Can I go and say, shake hand with Isa al-Islam? Uh, they said, he has died. You need to go to Damascus. No, no. But they told me, no, no, he has died. He came and went away and now you have to believe in him. Stop. I said, who is the guy? And uh, they said, here, they showed me a picture, Shadi, uh, that huge picture and there was Urdu words for, uh, uh, share was written, you know, like uh, Urdu poetry. Ye wakt tha, wakt ya ro. I could never forget that line actually. It was written under his photo, Ye wakt tha wakt masiha yaro, mein na aata to koi aur hi aaya hota. Which means, this was the time of Messiah. If he didn't come, somebody else would have come. So I asked him after reading that, I said, my dear, where it is written in Quran and Hadith? He said, oh, there's a Hadith about it that Isa al-Islam will come in 14th century. And I got shocked. I said, 14th century is getting short now. It will be a 15th century soon. So he said, there you go. You should come and accept, join us. And I said, oh, that's quite a worrying thing. Let me investigate this hadith at least. Yeah. So I asked everybody on planet Earth I could talk to. And I asked Kadianis, where is it? He said, go and ask the Muslim scholars. They say it. We don't say it. That's what they told me. Their yeah. Khalifa said this word to me, and their Imam said this word to me, that this is the saying of Muslim scholars, and we don't say it. Right. One day I went to the Central Mosque in London, you know, in Baker Street? Yes, yes. There was the Imam of the mosque who was Egyptian. Okay. And I said to him after Friday prayer, I said, yes. can I ask where is this particular Hadith, Isa al-Islam will come in 14th century? And he did the doctorate in Fiqh and Hadith, and he was the professor in Al Azhar. Then he was appointed Imam here. I said, if you don't know, nobody would know. And his name was Sharkavi, actually. Oh, yes, yes. Mashallah. You know him? Yes. Yeah, yeah, he's a good scholar, isn't he? He was yes. the Mufti of Ireland and England as well. Yeah, yeah, he's very knowledgeable, mashallah. Yes. So he said to me, there is no Hadith like that. I said, but people are telling me this. So he took me to his office yeah. and he said to me, look, uh, there is one book where this hadith is written. I, and he took out Mirza Kadiani book. And <laughs> really? Said, you had oh, it in the yeah, library? Yeah. 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 He said, here it is written by Mirza Kadiani that yes. Isa al-Islam will come in 14th century and he will be the mujaddad, i.e. the reformer of the century. And I said, uh, Prophet cannot be reformer. It's a far superior office than the office of a reformer. Yeah. So he said, exactly right. This was a mentally ill person. And I cannot forget the next line. I've got a reference here uh, as well. And that next line read that this is written in Sahih al-Bukhari, which is Ashal Qutb, Badat's Quran. Now I tell all Qadiani that you bring that hadith from Bukhari, any edition ever since it's published. Yeah. I will shut my mouth. And I'll give you one crore rupees Pakistani in any currency of the world. Yeah. SubhanAllah. You how big liars these are. Anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was... Uh, I actually came to listen to you because 
uh, you, 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 your analysis is very good. And uh, do you mind if I put this video on my channel as well? Of course, of course, no problem, no problem. Uh, yeah, Subhanallah. You know, um, one of the things I I, I liked what uh, Adnan actually mentioned. He said that whether it's any group, the Shia or the Qadianis, if they bring a reference, always check it. First of all, check the the authenticity because they will bring fabricated ahadith or they will bring weak ahadith. Secondly, check their translation because the translation they give you is they play with words, they play mental gymnastics, they play with semantics. And thirdly, yani check the isnad, the authenticity, check the and then context as well. So uh, the authenticity, the the translation, and the context, because it, now hundred percent of the time they will misquote and they will mistranslate and they will uh, give you weak narrations or fabricated narrations. Uh, I think in some way Adnan is right. Actually, Adnan hasn't had a huge interaction with Qadiani unless yes. you interact with them. You don't yeah, yeah, learn yeah. their ways. There yes. are two groups in Qadianis. Okay. Uh, more than 80% Qadianis are fairly decent people. Yes. They have never read Mirza Qadiani book. The yeah. things they we were have just born as, born as Qadianis, yeah. Yes, they are born Qadiani. That's why they are Qadianis. Yes. And those who have the knowledge are those who are on social media. Yes. They will tell lies most of yes. the time. And they yes. will take the advantage of the fact if the person they are talking to doesn't know exactly what the Qadiani yes. is about. Yes. To check their reference, they will not give you a reference on the first place. Secondly, right. their biggest reference of Qadiani, I can tell you, you must have heard of it if you know Qadiani. They say when the Messiah will come, yes. you go to him even if you have to crawl on your knees and say yes. my salam to him. Have you heard that? Yes. It's written in Dar Kutni. Right. I thought that was this about is, the Mahdi. Yes, about the Mahdi. And this is not a reliable address. Some people say it's even Matruk, and the author of Dar Kutni is not a reliable uh, yes. narrator of a hadith. That's yes. why I've got one rule for Qadianis. I tell them that, look, I know the Quran. I memorized Quran when I was seven Mashallah. year old. Mashallah. And uh, I accept Hadith as long as it's in Sahar Sitta. Yes, exactly. It has to be authentic. Yes. Yeah. If it and is authentic, in Sitta, authentic they, need, they need to give the chain of narration also. That is not. Absolutely. You know, in yes. Sahih Muslim and Sahih Bukhari, yes. the chain of narration is very, very strong in majority of Case. Yes. Now I think the, the shortest chain is three narrators and the longest is seven in Bukhari between absolutely. three and seven. No, yes. no. For a hadith to be sahih, yes. minimum is three. Yeah, yeah. I'm saying the shortest chain in Bukhari is three, three. And narrators. Yes. And in Bukhari, you find six, seven, eight, six, seven, Correct. eight in Correct. this chain. Correct. Correct. You refer to Albani. Sheikh Al Albani. Do you know who is Albani? Yes, he's, uh, he's a giant in the field of hadith. No, no, no. Uh, do you know his life story? Yes, Sheikh Al-Albani, yes. Where he comes from? Albania. He's Morocco? Albanian. No, he's Albanian. He was born in Morocco, Sheikh Albani. Yeah, but he's Albanian. Uh, it is written in Wikipedia as well. Yes. Sheikh Albani was kicked out of the school in primary education schools. His father was a religious teacher part-time and he full-time job was watchmaker. Since Sheikh Albani was removed from the school, he started having education privately from his father and most of the time he would work as watchmaker. You read about him. I read about him, Albani very clo closely because one reason I read about Albani was there is a, a website called sunnah.com sunnah.com, yes. Which give two references. Yes. Darus Salam and Albani. Yes. About the ahadith, Albani was you know the date of death of Albani when he died? 
1999, recently, yes. 20 he years 80, ago. Yeah, he was 85, yes. Yes, he is the not a man of great past. I mean, he was born in the era we were alive as well. He was alive when we were alive as well, isn't it? Yeah. We yeah, over born in 1914. Yes. Yeah, born in 1914, died in 1999. Correct. And he was almost 85 year old when he died. Yes, yes. And this website, quote Albani, because Albani has given those ahadith a grading. Sahih yeah, yeah. Sheikh Al Albani is a giant in the field of a hadith. He's, you know, he's uh, quoted for authentication. Authentication, that's what he said. And do yeah, you, yeah. have you heard of Darus Salaam? Yes, Darus Salaam, yes. What's Darus Salaam? Darus Salaam is the publication house. They produce publication most, of, house. Yeah, most of the uh, authentic Islamic literature. So, how Darul Islam gave the grading to Hadith? Which Hadith are you talking about? Many Hadith in Sunnah.com, yeah, yeah. the grading... But Darul Salaam, is, uh, Darul Salaam is, is not as reliable as Sheikh Al-Albani. Darul Salaam used a Pakistani guy whose name right. is Ali Khan, if I okay. remember correctly. Okay. And that man has neither Albani nor Ali ever had yeah. the proper teaching of Hadith and Fiqh from any yeah. institution. None. Zero. Anyway, I don't disagree with some of their grading, but some of their gradings are incorrect. Sheikh Al Albani was born in Albania in Skoda, Skoda, Albania. Yeah. Yeah. His place of birth is Albania as well. Yeah, he's yes. Albanian, yes. Anyway, um, Abdullah, where's Bashir gone? I don't know. He'll be here if you. I'm. I'm just getting a little tired, brother. That's it. <laughs> yeah. No problem. No problem. Um, There's no so other what... caller today. Where Where is everyone? Why is nobody joining? And I, I told you when I come on a stream, you do a stream <laughs> without me. The Kardianis will come. Uh, they yes. know that. Uh, yeah. To cheat me on Kadiani material is a little bit harder than other people. They, they, you're their kryptonite. <laughs> well, you see, I tell Kadiani it's very simple thing. If you have to talk to me, I will bring the reference, you bring the reference. Right? And yes, my principle right. is very simple. I refuse to talk about uh, the birth and death of Isa al-Islam at all. Yeah, I don't yeah. discuss this with them. Yeah, there's no, there's, there's, no po there's no point going to the, that discussion. And the other favorite topic is Jirai Nabuvat, that yeah. Nabuvat is continuing, the Prophet yeah. is continuing. I don't see. I tell them one simple thing, that you claim Mirza Qadiani is eligible for the office of prophethood. Yes, let's talk you about his prove to me that yes. he is and yes. we will talk about his life and time and his writings and if you convince me then we can go on to quran and hadith otherwise there's yeah. no use of it. because there's no use because they play mental gymnastics they'll twist the meanings of words etc you go go to the source you know to prove that islam is true you, you prove that the prophet muhammad sallam was a true prophet you know so if they they claim that mirza is a prophet they need to demonstrate that from his writings from his life from his uh, character, from his conduct, from his language, you know. So there's no point going on to these peripheral issues about Isa alayhi salam. Qadiani will never talk about the life and time of Mirza Qadiani. Yeah, because they're they're embarrassed. There's nothing about... to show. Yes. Not just that. I mean, it's not a neutral uh, position. It's actually a negative position for them. Very negative position. Yeah. You know, there's one thing. If they, there was nothing negative or minimum. Minimum, you could say, okay, he was an average neutral person, but because there's so much negative, and from his own writings, like you demonstrated, you know, I, that he said he was mentally ill and he has continence issues and all this kind of stuff. No, no, he has, look, one who passes the urine 100 times a day, actually, yeah. he is passing urine every 16 minutes and 30 seconds. Right? <laughs> and if yes. you take into account this duration, five minutes is spent passing urine. If he hasn't got the B9 prostatic hypertrophy, it'll be six, seven, ten minutes, right? He is very likely to have BHP as well. 
BPH yes. as well, which is B9 hypertrophy at least. And yes. then, you know, he used to wear the women's clothes like Rara. Did you know this? No, I didn't know that. Oh, I've got cross, a reference. He was cross-dressing. Yeah, yeah, he was uh, wearing the women's clothes. And he so if he, was, if he was alive today, he might be in the LGBTQ movement. He was in his time. Actually, he's a favor of rainbow people. No, no, it, it'll be easy because he's MGAQ anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Subhanallah. No, no. Anyway, it's very... Hey brother, I, I was thinking for the last 10 minutes, you, you should be alone and maybe some Kalyanis will show up. They're not going to come if they see me. And, no, 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 no. Shadi, where are the people who used to come and... Put, actually, I'll tell you, Brother Isa. Kadiani Khalifa recently has deleted, ordered to delete the social media channels. Right. They have deleted their main major channels and only one or two or three are functional now. One is the MD answer, other is called, I think, the real Islam or something like that. And the rest are closed. And he has ordered his people, don't go to social media and engage in right. discussion with us, people like us. He said, this is the job of people who are properly trained. And okay. who are those properly trained? Actually, I have never seen anybody so far at all. The Murabis. They don't come. We welcome them. I mean, I want any Murabi to come. Correct. Yeah. I think also Adnan was saying that they've been told not to attend Speaker's Corner and anything like that. No, no, no. They don't come to Speaker's Corner anymore. They yeah. were coming during Jalsa Salana days, you know? Yes. You know what the Delsa Slana is, the annual gathering in UK and yeah, in yeah. every country of the world where they are found in 10, uh, 5 or more quantity. And one uh, thing, I think you should do a stream on one other factor and uh, we will bring the ex Kadianis as well. Yeah. And yes. uh, Shaji is one of the very good ex Kadiani. Actually, uh, before I came on social media, I used to think of Shaji like Albani. <laughs> no, no. Because his blog, I used to read as a, a authentic evidence of Kadiani, you know. For me, he was a character of a fiction which I never thought I will meet. He's a warrior. He's a warrior, mashallah. No, no, no. He has got a very good collection. Very, very good collection. And majority of it is actually historically correct. And the one of the best thing about Shaji's blog is, which is in thousands of pages, it is neutral. Yes. It is unbiased. I mean, even when I speak, and although I have got no animosity with any Kadiani whatsoever, uh, yes. apart from that, I not only believe that I also say that they are very misled people, which yes. is a fair opinion. Shaji writing is so neutral that you would think you are reading a book of history written for the school children. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. No, no. Bashir, yeah. Yeah, Bashir can, you get, can you just share your story very quickly about how you left uh, yeah, 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 and 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 I'll tell you why I write that way because I could write way more complicated if I wanted to. The thing is, for the average person to learn, yes, you gotta say it the right way, you know. And Correct. With it, with wisdom, it, with wisdom. Right, right. And in rap music, all the rappers who said all these complicated things, no one listened <laughs> because it's so complicated you can't even remember what they said. You know, yeah, so, yeah. but the ones who said it in a simpler way, uh, it ended up resonating. But just uh, very quickly, and I'm not sure how long we're going today, but uh, very quickly, I was just a kid in college, <laughs> you know, and I said, hey, I, 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 I never thought I'd be in college for aeronautical engineering. And now I know how airplanes work and I could design if I had a team and et cetera and a budget. Uh, oh, OK, I, I, I went to Rubble and I got married. And I had asked in Rubwa, you know, uh, who's read the books of Mirza Glam? But they're all in Urdu. Back then it was like 90% in Urdu. Now right. it's like 20% or now it's almost 80% are in English. You know, it's like a lot, right? Yes. So 
yeah. no one read anything and i was like oh dang you don't you didn't read you didn't read either and i noticed i, I lived in rub up for like a month you know and people aren't religious that they, they're watching pornography in the internet cafe i saw all these things and i was like well my dad didn't tell me that he <laughs> told me this is the best people in the world he told me i'm bad and they're good and and i'm like i just worked my whole life you know manual yeah. labor no one really helping me uh i gotta work whether it's hot cold you know yes. and I, I just came across an entire city where most of them got a, a relative in germany who's sending them money or right. any somewhere and they're just living easy and i'm like they they they're they're lazy they don't want to work they watch porn together uh the the temples are empty and i was like wow i had no idea so then i said well let me read about let me read about them you know i and i'd heard about the lahori amnes there was a lahori okay. amni in oakland of okay. Akko, who i went to a therbiath camp with i don't know why the lahori amnes sent this kid to a kadiani therbiath camp but they did what's the difference sorry my knowledge is weak what's the difference between lahori kadianis and kadianis yeah so yeah. so the uh the, the lahoris said they were the educated group of the Kadiani. Okay. Yes. Mirza Muhammad died and they saw all that and they they knew they all lived together brother by the way Mirza Ghulam Muhammad had about 10 15 ghost writers. Wow. You all live in the same house. If you all live in the how do you have 10 15 families living in a super mansion you know that's not even halal brother you know uh you, you you're, you're mixing with someone else yeah. women who Wait, are, where's this where's the segregation yeah yeah, where's the second? They they all live in the same house. So that was the team. Someone would lead the Friday prayer. Someone read led the regular prayer. Someone wrote yeah. the books. Someone wrote was a scribe. Someone responded to letters. Anyways, so um, so I started reading about the Lahori Amnis. I, I read all the books of Moulvi Muhammad Ali <laughs> in like in like a few months because they were all in English. Not all of them, like eighty percent. So uh, he says the Mirza Ghulam Amnis is not a prophet. And I was okay. like, oh. So re remember that the schizophrenia goes further. In 1891, Mirza Ghulam Ahmed claimed to be the Messiah, but he said, I'm not a prophet. Okay. Mm. He said, anyone claims to be a prophet, kill him. Kafir. Kutta, et cetera, et cetera. He said all the things a Punjabi man would say. <laughs> you know, the, the Kutta is the first thing that comes out of their mouth. And then I'm gonna give you another famous worldwide quote from Dr. Say the Holy Spirit. Uh a kutta wala ka. Because <laughs> you know, kutta is spelled with it, it could be either one. You wouldn't know. You know, in America, yeah. we don't know. Is it the is it the Q or is it the K? You know? <laughs> so <laughs> say it. <laughs> I, Shadi, I can tell you this is in Kutabul Briya. Yeah. Uh, yes, actually. So Kadian, the original word Kadian is Kutta Walaka. Kadian really? changed it to the Nukta Walaka. <laughs> no, no, original Kadian is written with Kutta Walaka, honestly. I'm not joking. I can prove it. And that was actually very befitting for the Mirza Kadian. <laughs> Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Okay, so look, Dr. Say and Holy Spirit got like 50 amazing quotes. I don't have the audio for the Kutawalak off, but I fell out of my chair laughing for weeks, <laughs> for weeks, brother. Okay. Okay. Sometimes I played in the morning just to get my testosterone going. You know what I mean? Okay. Look, so, um, so, so, uh, so Moldi Muhammad Ali, he called the sons of Mirza Glam Mamad as opportunists. He said Mirza Glam Mamad didn't claim to be a prophet. He says Mirza Glam Mamad even though he sounds like he's claiming prophethood, he's not. So did, this goes back to the delusions, right? Yes. Um, yes. Mr. Glamour said, "I am a prophet. I'm not a prophet. I am a prophet. I'm not a prophet." Then he's then his sons tell us he invented a new category of prophethood that never existed in the history of the Quran or the Hadith. Subhanallah. So only a crazy man says, oh, "Okay, prophethood is ended. Let me create a new category." Like, wasn't there a woman who claimed prophethood who said, "Well, the Quran said men." or yeah. implied men it didn't say women yeah, yeah, yeah. you know so that's delusion and hysteria and mirak and etc cetera, etc cetera. So, so, uh, so actually now that you mentioned that Bashir, one thing i read in is it haqiqatul wahi he claimed many things that he was allah at one point did he claim he was allah yeah that's earlier in uh, aina sadaq in uh, okay. aina islam not so one he, time 
Now one's I have got a few references. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I so have got yeah. at least two dozen references he claiming Allah. Do you want yeah, to claim them? Yeah, please. He claimed he was Allah. He claimed he was. Okay, uh, you talk to Shadi. Yeah. Yeah. He, he claimed he was gonna go pull him. Yeah. He, he claimed he was Krishna at one point. He claimed he was the second coming of Muhammad Sallam. He's all that, bro. Listen, bro. He's all that so, in a bag of chips, bro. Wow. Yeah. So I mean, these these are clear delusions that he's experiencing. He he said he's the second coming of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's for Allah. He even Sallam. said in in greater glory. He said the the second coming is it's hard for me to even say it, but he said it's something like it's greater than the first. Because in the first, he only converted Arabia astaghfirullah, or something like that. Like the, the, the parallel is just ridiculous. And you you saw the Qadiani try to make a parallel and said the death of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam astaghfirullah is oh no, nah, bro. See, but that's what they'll stoop to. To that's what they'll stoop. But let me, let me I mean, go back to the story. Yeah, yeah please, I'll, yeah, carry I'll, on. I'll summarize in like two minutes and let we we can move to the next one. But um. Carry on, yeah. please. Yeah, so I read the books of Mulvi Muhammad Ali. The Lahori Amdis say MGA is not a prophet. He's just a metaphoric prophet. You know what I mean? Majazi, you know, that one. You know, like the cuss yeah. word. You know, in, so in our culture, the first cuss word anyone says is about your sister, right? Yes. Fast, fast, right? And yes, it's sort yeah. of like the word fanset, but it's not the word fanset. It's something else, right? Yeah. Um, and uh, he's saying, oh, it's a metaphor. <laughs> he's he's full, full of metaphors, right? But but you'd get punched in the face and then you'd have to clarify. So it, it would be it would be late. It would be a late explanation. So anyways, <laughs> uh, uh, that's their first disagreement is Mirza Glam Ahmed's not a prophet. The second okay. one is they're like, his sons can't be the Khalifas. Y'all are liars. And if yeah, we live yeah, with yeah. you, you know. Uh, all of y'all are like that, right? We know, you know, the first Khalifa, Mirza Glam Ahmed's widow, said she's he, her, his lonely. Lo, bro, like, are you saying what? In front of people? <laughs> You're not saying that privately. You said yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. You said, I belong. So it, You're, yeah. She it, basically it, said, I belong to bro. Basically. It sounds like they, they, there was a power vacuum after he died. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So all this yeah. happened. So, they they also uh, uh they don't call muslims uh kafir which is like okay whatever and then uh they they believe astaghfirullah mazallah allah forgive me that isa al-islam had a biological father uh, so that takes them you know some people say that they are saved from the fear okay since they denied the prophethood they didn't cross the major red line but they crossed another major red line that's they yes. accuse Maryam of having a, a come on, bro. So that's basically the story. I, I read about them and then I was stuck and I was like, how do I get out? So I was able to get myself untangled. You know, uh, I, I was entangled and I got out of it. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Um, so so when you started reading the literature, you started questioning, like, what the heck is going on? Yeah. Like, what's yeah. what is going on here? Why is this Mirza family so bad? So that's what every, everybody comes to that. Every Qadiani Amdi within the first year of reading will come across the Lahori Amdis because they, they have a website, they have so much literature. The Lahori Amdis had the first mosque in London, bro. What are you talking? What are we talking about? Wow, the first mosque in the Woke King. Have you been to Woke King? Yes, the Lahori Amdis managed it for 50 years. That they had so if, if you were in England in the 1940s, yes. there's no mosque. You want to go to a mosque and pray, it's the Lahori Amdis, it's the, it's the temple. So what are you going to do? In Germany, the Lahori Amdis had the first mosque ever in that country. Really? Wow. SubhanAllah. They, they were taken to West Africa. The, the Lahoris were, were taken to Suriname, to Fiji, to Indonesia. The Dutch said, we want some of them. <laughs> you know, so, oh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So, so, so brother, the way I read in college, the way I did research is the same way I, I read about Islam. There was no bias, and I saw all these problems. And that's the, the long and short of it. But uh, back to say, say the Holy Spirit, let's talk about how Mirza Glam Ahmed claimed to be God. Yeah. So, sorry, uh, yeah. Bashir, yeah. you left, you left uh, Qadianism, but then I, I heard a lot of people become like astaghfirullah atheists or agnostic. So what made you become to Sunni Islam? Yeah, uh, really quick. Uh, research. So, so again, I studied evolution. I don't believe it. Even though I believed sense. in my whole life. It doesn't life. make sense. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. It doesn't make sense because a mule, a horse and a donkey make a mule. But a donkey can't, a, a mule can't make more mules. 
<laughs> well, there's no there's there's no empirical evidence for cross speciation anyway. Not not at it, all. It, and and, it, and no yeah. no Darwin, he goes to the island in the Galapagos that's got finches on it, and he says just because the finch beak changes, there's seven species of beak. You can come up with every with exactly. any of them. Yeah, in, exactly. In, in humans, if my dad is black and my mom is white, I might be either a mixture or or I'll have my dad's buta. And I'll have yeah. my mom's hair or whatever. How does that yeah. prove? He says, no, the beaks magically changed based on what was needed, bro. Come on, bro. Knock it off, yeah. bro. The, the, yeah. There's only two species of camel, two, that were ever created on this earth by Allah. Two. Yeah. You can make a third one You can because you can breed them two together. But again, Allah made a stop sign. Allah said, but, but the new one you make can't make more. Have you, have you, have you, we're, we're kind of bearing off, but have you heard of the minimum gene concept? No, no. So there's a, they, they've, they've uh, found that a living cell has to have a minimum set of genes and it's around between 80 to, I think, 300. So the people who claim that we came from this primordial soup, whatever. So how did we go, go from non life to life? So the first living cell, for it to be viable, it had to have at least a minimum uh, gene. Uh, con uh, number which is around 80 to 200 or 250 so subhanallah like how how did the that initial uh kind of gene uh number come across come in the first living cell you, brother, so let, let me just summarize look 150 yeah. years ago they came up with evolution they came up with the fossils they came up with dinosaurs and they came up with out of africa theory it's all a lie yeah every single one of them it was the colonizers going out trying to explain why they were better than everyone else yeah and they said we all started as a worm and i'm better than you and that's why i'm in charge and you're not because i evolved you didn't that's what it is okay yeah, yeah. and once i figured that out i was like nah bro then the, there's other scientific things you know uh uh like the mosquitoes and the ants and the bees but the the moon you know, I explained this before. The moon is balancing the earth. Okay. Love, if love if the moon wasn't there exactly at the coordinates and the size, you know, that's the biggest moon in the universe. There ain't a moon in the entire known universe that's bigger than ours. It's 27% our size. Doesn't love exist. You know, Venus doesn't have a moon. If Venus had a moon as big as ours, maybe, maybe there'd be life if Allah allowed it, right? There's still other things that got to happen. Mars got like a small little moon that's like a mile across. You know what I mean? It's got this small. It doesn't have a moon 27% in size. So I know all this. I, I read about all this. I know it's not random. This is not yes. a random interval, brother. This yes. is a lot made this. Fine tune. Yes. Fine tune. And brother, there ain't no aliens. Listen, um, they, they, there's a certain speed you, you have to achieve just to escape Earth. Okay. Yes. If you don't go that fast, you're not escaping Earth. Okay. If so, you're not, if you're not, if you're not an angel, you're not escaping anywhere. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. so you know, I the a lot of these things that that that's my story, and and yeah, let's go to Doctor Say the Holy Spirit. Mashallah. Doctor yeah. Say, are you there? Say it. Yeah, yeah. The, if you can share this one, you will see that. Bismillah. Let's do it. Yeah, and. Uh, this is the one of the famous Ilham of Mirza. I keep on repeating. So you can see the reference and the page itself. I hope you are able to see. Yeah, can I can see it. enlarge it and you can read it now. Yes. That this is his Ilham. And for 20 years, he didn't know that the Isa Islam was not coming down. You see, that's uh, another reference. It's Khazain, volume 13, page 104. Uh, he, I'll read this highlighted text for you. It says, Maine apne kashf mein dekha ke main khud khuda. He said, Kashf, you know, in Islam, Kashf is a thing between the dream and conscious level. I'm sure yes. you know about yes. this thing. Yes. And uh, uh, if you see something in Kash, you actually are seeing the fact. So he yes. says, Mene apne e kash me dekha ke main khud khuda hu. He said, I saw that I am the God. 
اور یقین کیا کہ وہی ہوں اینڈ آئی بلیو دیٹ آئی ایم ایگزیکٹلی دی گاڈ اینڈ میرا اپنا کوئی ارادہ اور خیال اور عمل نہیں رہا اور میں باریک ایک سراخ دار برتن کی طرح ہو گیا ہی سیٹ آئی ڈیڈنٹ ہیو اینی آف مائی اون آئیڈیا ڈائریکشن اینڈ آئی بیکیم لائک اے سی اے پوٹ وتھ دی ہولس ان اٹ سو دین ہی کیپس آن ڈسکرائبنگ دس تھنگ سو آئی گو ٹو دی نیکسٹ ریفرنس یو کین probably some of these books they have translated now but i'm sure their translation is not the real one but yeah. let's see the next one it is again khazain volume 13 page 105 this time and this is kitabul briya another book mirza writes there you can see this is on two pages خدا تعالیٰ میرے وجود میں داخل ہو گیا گاڈ اینٹرڈ ان ٹو ہز باڈی اینڈ میرا غزب حلم تلخی اور چرینی اور حرکت سب اسی کا ہو گیا ہی سیٹ آل مائی اینگر مائی کٹ سی مائی بٹرنیس اینڈ مائی سویٹنیس اینڈ مائی موومنٹ آل بیکیم ہز موومنٹس اور دین ہی سیٹ ان دس کنڈیشن آئی واز سینگ کہ ہم ایک نیا نظام اور نیا آسمان اور نئی زمین چاہتے ہیں ہی از ڈوئنگ اے کریشن ناؤ ان سورا الملک قرآن سے گاڈ ہیز کریٹڈ فلا لیس ہی از سینگ دیٹ واز ناٹ فلا لیس ہی وانٹ ٹو کریٹ اے نیو سسٹم نیو ہیونس اینڈ نیو ارتھ دیٹس واٹ از سینگ سو میں نے پہلے تو آسمان اور زمین کو اجمالی صورت میں پیدا کیا ہی سیٹ فرسٹ آئی کریٹڈ ہیونس اینڈ دین ارتھ Yes. جس میں کوئی ترتیب اور تفریق نہ تھی ہی سیٹ اٹ واس رینڈم اٹ واز این آرگنائز تھنگ وچ آئی کریٹ دین ہی گوز پھر میں نے منشا حق کے موافق اس کی ترتیب و تفریق کی ہی سیٹ دین آئی آرگنائز اٹ ایز وشڈ بائی دی حق وچ پروبلی ایزیوم بائی دی گاڈ اینڈ ہی از پریٹینڈنگ ٹو بی گاڈ ہیم سیلف ہی از پلیئنگ گاڈ اور میں دیکھتا تھا کہ میں اس کے خلق پر قادر ہوں ای سیٹ آئی سا دیٹ آئی ایم ایبل ٹو کریٹ آل دیس تھنگ اینڈ ناؤ لسن واٹ ہی از سینگ اینڈ ریڈ اٹ اٹس دی قرآن ورڈس ہی ہیز ڈن تحریف لفسی ان قرآن اٹ سیز ولا قد زین سما دنیا بے مسابی رائٹ اینڈ اٹ پورا الملک ہی ہیز ریٹن stars. اینڈ دین ہی گوز آن پھر میں نے کہا اب ہم انسان کو مٹی کے خلاصہ سے ہی سیٹ دین آئی سیٹ آئی ول کریٹ دی ہیومن فرام دی کلے سو دیٹ از ہز سیکنڈ کلیم سو ہی گوز ورس دین دس ایکچولی نا سوری ڈاکٹر سید ہی سینگ دس از وین ہیز ڈریمنگ اور دس از وین ہیز اویک he doesn't say he's dreaming the first one was kashif you know kashif yeah. is a state of mind once yes. the people are between the awake and yeah. sleep it's in kind between. of se- semi semi conscious type yeah semi conscious and in islam it is supposed to be 100% true thing so he yes. said i saw in kashif that i am the god There's something, uh, Dr. Sayyid, I don't know if you've heard of something called hypnagogic and hypnopompic hallucinations. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's before sleeping and... Uh... Yeah, and when you're waking, and that's a normal phenomena. So I don't know whether he's having this as a no, hypnagogic... No, no, he's not a hypnagogic thing he's yeah. talking about. I'll tell you why. I'm coming... You see, I have collected his references in a sequence. He yes. goes worse from worse, like I told him about his mental state. Yes. So you look yes. at these references, you will know what he is saying. Okay. Uh, here I wanted to show you that he has done tarif-e-lafsi. You see? 
He yeah. has changed the word wala ka din Quran with inna zayyana sama dunya. And we, you cannot call a man even a simple Muslim who does this with Quran, can you? No, correct. Now, this is his Arabic book, Kaina Kamalat Islam, the same the, he had a row with the Tanan. It's yes. a volume 5, page 540, 564. Yes. Varaiti filmenam Allah. No dream, nothing. Varaiti filmenam. You know what the manam is in Arabic language? Sleep. Sleep. Varaiti yeah. filmenam and Allah and in sleep I saw I am the eye, the eye of the eye of Allah, yes. And Allah in Arabic mean exactly the Allah. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. When it is used in this context, it means one hundred percent the same. And Allah. Yes, yes. The eye of Allah. Yeah, and one hundred percent the same. Anyway. We, I have got loads of other references. Uh, we can go further than this. These now, are these are clear, these, these are clear delusions. He he has yes. Oh, he has got delusion. He was mentally ill. Yeah. I think he was the last grade of schizophrenia the man had. Yeah, because he had untreated schizophrenia. He wasn't being treated with antipsychotic medication. Absolutely. Yeah. That's yeah. the curse of God that he didn't. And he wanted to treat him himself. I think in another stream, we can show you a lot more yeah, than sure this. Sure now, yes. here it says, look, uh, let's look at the reference first. So that the Qadiani don't say it. It's Khazain, volume 20, page 404, Tajalliyat e Ilahiya. It's the name of the book. Now I will enlarge what I want you to see. This is a paragraph. It says, "Maine is jaga tak mazmoon ko khatam kiya tha ke aaj phir 15 March 1906 ko bros panch shamba vakte subah ye laham hua." He said, "I finished this topic here. Then again today on 15th March 1906. You see, he died in 1908." Yeah. In 1902, he said he is the Nabi and Rasul both. Yeah. His Prophethood claim comes from yeah. 1901. Mm. And he says, today on 15th March 1906, he had a ilham, which means the God told him early morning. Look what the God told him. Khuda nikalne ko hai. He said, the God is about to come out. Then in Arabic, he says, anta minni be manzalati bruzi. You are just my, like me in a way of a bruise. And one day probably we can discuss bruise and zil is the Hindu terminology. Okay. okay. It doesn't come from Islam. It comes from Hinduism. So he says, this God is, yeah. told him, Anta minni be manzalati brodi, you are a God like me as well. Astaghfirullah. Yeah. And then look. He continues in Arabic. He says, this is, this, is, this is shirk. It's more than shirk. Yeah. You re, uh, listen to the rest, you will see it's more than shirk. Then he continues, Waad Allah. And this is the promise of Allah. Yes. Inna wa'ad Allah la yubaddil. And Allah does not change his promise. promise. Yeah, it doesn't change his promise. Yes. So, you, how clearly you can say that say God is saying, "Anta minni be manzalati brudi," you are a God like me as well. Auzu billah, auzu billah. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Now, Kadiani will say to you that read the next line. So, I shall read the next. He says, "Yani Khuda in five zalzalon ko lane se apna chehra zahir karega." He said five. Earthquakes will come and God will show His face in them. But He says, or apne vajud ko dekhladega and will show His self. God will show Himself. Then I have highlighted, you can read that. Yes. He says, or tu mujh se aisa hai, jaisa ke main hi zahir ho gaya. 
in those earth shapes he says because you are here the god is telling him you are for me you are the same as i am allahu akbar and he says as you are there it means i am there astaghfirullah and next he says yani arabic laf yani mean it means yes yani yeah, yeah. zahur yani the advent of mirza qadiani wa ane hi mera zahur he said it's exactly as if i the god has come astaghfirullah he says coming of you is exactly as if i the god has come now if you have a stomach i can show you more so uh, doc, dr sayed this is the christian uh, theology it's, it's you know they they say that uh, isa was the god and he was the son of god so he's claiming the same thing uh, the christians theology is slightly different and more no. decent than mirza yeah, yeah i know but what i'm saying is it's along the same kind of a theme no no he He's wants saying... to prove to look prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that do not give me a yes. preference over any other prophet he said do not build uh, do not play uh, uh, make my uh, grave a place of worship like the christians have made a place of worship for isa no no apart from that he said i i'll tell you it's one of the hadiths i'm telling you what's written not the exact words he said yeah. one day in masjid an nabawi yes. to the sahaba that i saw a jinn in the mosque last night but i said nothing to him because allah subhana wa taala has given that power to control jinna to my brother sulaiman alayhi salatu wassalam yes and he never claimed that he had been given the powers of all prophets or any number of prophets Yes. Mirza's ilham is Jariullah fi hulul anbiya. The line of God mixture of all the God, prophets. And then he writes the God has given me the powers and the qualities of Moses, Jesus, Solomon, Daud and he goes on list he said all prophet characteristics have been given to me. and then he says that i am the second coming of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam astaghfirullah astaghfirullah neither hadith nor quran nor the history of islam says any place that there will be a second coming of muhammad yeah i mean the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is has passed away khalas and then in malfuzat one of his book he writes that after his advent after he has come no decision can be made with the quran alone he writes that with quran hits ilham or wahi should be considered to make any decision of period a'udhu billah this is kufr this is more than kufr <laughs> and i have got all these references look here it says anta minni bi manzilati auladi god is telling him you are just like my aulad my child yeah so this is christian uh, belief yes yes but the thing is anta minni bi manzilati bruzi is not a christian belief yes And yes christian but this this concept is... of a child children of god yeah no he says here he is a child of god in yes. the one before he was saying he is the god he is the bruise yeah. of god He is yeah, another he is, god. Is, he is another god. He's a he's equivalent. Yeah, this this is a this is binity, binity, and then this is Subhanallah. This is clearly he's clearly mentally ill. He's got delusions. Not, he yeah. is in Quran. The last verse of Surah Al Kahf says that if you wish, if you think you will meet your Lord, your Creator, fal yamal amalan saleh. do the right deed and only one right deed is described there fal yamal amalan saliha wala yushrik bi ibadati rabbihi ahada don't associate partners with allah he is saying i am the partner 
Yes, it's a shirken kufr, yeah. So that's that's why I I mean I just say it because Yani asked me why do I tell them these things and I say I don't tell them to convert you and I can tell you one thing. In last sixteen or eighteen months, more than three hundred eighty Qadiani has accepted Islam. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Right? Allahu and Akbar. they have come in droves, in families, the entire Mashallah. families. You see, when I came to the social media, yes, there was a channel called Aka Ka Gulam. I was there for fifteen days. Okay. And one of the Qadiani family from Australia, actually two o'clock at night, as our time, accepted Islam on my hand. Allahu Akbar. I mean, Allahu Akbar. And then after two weeks, another family accepted Islam. And then it continued. But the thing is, it's not that what we do. I tell them I do these things so that the Allah forgive me. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, I have told you. Uh, that what the Quran and Hadith exactly is. And yes. the most important thing for me is that Qadiani, you know, I'll tell you a very interesting thing about Qadiani. You know about Maslik and uh, uh, Firqa, that Sunni, Wahhabi and all that, they are Maslik, yes. they are religions, aren't they? Yeah. And yes. the Quran doesn't talk about Maslik, Quran talks about Deen. Yes. The, Al-Yawma Akmal Tu Lakum Deena What Mantua La Ikraf with Deena Islam yes. only talk about Deen There's a reason for it The reason is That when the Prophet comes Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam All Sallallahu Or any Prophet when it comes All Muslims are abrogated Because Prophet has direct link with the God Yes God gave him the message He gave the fatwa there is no need for any maslak or any, but maslak is the one which gives a fatwa on yeah. the matters which are not clear from Quran and Hadith. Qul ati Allah wa ati or Rasul. Yes. But obey Allah then, obey the then, wa ulul amre minkum. Yes. There is no word for ati with them. Ati Allah wa ati or Rasul wa ulul amre minkum. Yeah, and the knowledgeable so, people. Yeah. Yes. These are the Muslim. One day, Sahaba asked Rasulullah, Ya Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when you will not be among us and we face a problem for which there is not a clear solution, what shall we do? So, Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, said, You make an istambat from Quran and Sunnah and make a conclusion. Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, if we did not get an answer, what do we do? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, you make a chaos from it. Yes. Sahaba again said, Ya Rasulullah, if we did not get an answer by chaos, the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, you make a ijma of ummat and follow that. Yes. This is Muslim. Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Hanbal, Imam Shafi, they gave fatawa about the matters which were not in Quran and Hadith, and more than 80% matters are directly answered by Quran and Hadith. That's what which cement all these Muslim and Muslim together into one nation. Yeah, they're, they're schools of fiqh, jurisprudence. Yeah, jurisprudence, exactly right. Muslim means jurisprudence, the book of yeah. law. But why yeah, is it? Now yeah, I'm going to tell you about Qadiani. You see, Qadiani are very funny people. <laughs> Look, they claim Mirza is a prophet. Correct? Yes. When prophet come, all the Maslak is abrogated. Because he has got direct link with the God. God tells him answer. No one can dispute it. As I say, Quran and this you cannot change, but Maslak you can change. Yes. You can actually amend the fatwa of any Muslim. Well, no, e even if you look at what uh, Imam Ahmed bin Hanbal, Abu yes. Hanifa, yes. Malik, Shafi, they said, if you find something in the, in the Quran or Hadith that goes against what we said, throw what we said away and take that. Absolutely, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Now, so, because they're human we, beings, they can make mistakes. 
Yeah. If Mirza yeah. is a prophet, then all the Maslik should be abrogated, isn't it? Yeah, we have to follow the, uh, the prophet. Follow the Mirza. Yeah. Now, if you ask Qadiani, and I'm going to tell you most amazing thing, which Maslik are you from? Do you know what do they say? What do they say? Hanfi. Really? Imam Abu Hanifa. Subhanallah. Not, and proof. They give you a proof, actually. They are so out of order people. <laughs> they have got a book called Fika Amdiya. There are two volumes of it, Fika Amdiya. And in the preface, it's written, it is Hanfi Fika, and they have made amendments in it. Mirza Qadiani wrote 84 small, small books in his life, which are like Kazain volume 1 to Kazain volume 23. None of the books, Brother Isa, has any fatwa in it. Like Fatawa mm -hmm. Rizbiya, Fatawa Hanfiya, Fatawa Hamli. Yes. Mirza never gave any fatwa about anything. Subhanallah. You tell me, what kind of prophet is it to believe in Imam Abu Hanifa? says that the Isa al-Islam is Mujaddad or the reformer of 14th century, right? And yes. never gave any fatwa in his life. Even a child who knows the basic things in Islam would say yes. he is a liar. Yes. Isn't it right? Yes, yes. So I, that's what I say to Qadiyan is that I am not against you. You call yourself something else. Yeah. Because you are not Muslim. And if your intention is to change Islam on the name of Islam by calling it the real Islam or the Hakiki Islam, you cannot do that. Yes. That's all yes. we want. You yes. call yourself something different because you are not Muslims and we yes. have proven that and most of the Muslim country have declared you yes. legally non-Muslims as is in the constitution of Pakistan as well. Yes. You, okay, call yourself Ahmadis, although we, I don't think they are Ahmadis, because Ahmad is the name of Prophet Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's why we should call them Qadianis. Yes. And yeah. I call Qadianis, call me Makki, call me Madni, yeah. and call it loudly every time you will call me Makki or Madni, I will say Shukr Alhamdulillah. Yes. Somebody called me Makki or Madni. And if you call <laughs> them Qadiani, they get offended. They get offended, yes. yes. Isn't it right? Yeah, SubhanAllah. This is subhanallah. another sign of the falsehood of Mirza. They do not actually, their inside spirit, which is a pure spirit, and every spirit is born on Islam, yes. rejects Petra, being that... Qadiani. Fitra, the fitra, yes. Yes. So their inner self says, no, Qadianiyat is not right. Being Qadiani is an offensive thing. Whereas you call me Makki and Madni, I'll feel so proud, honest to God, I'll jump to the sky. Yes, subhanallah, subhanallah, subhanallah. This is, uh, uh, so do you do you get into debates with the Qadianis uh, or uh, you know, how, how, do you, how do you interact with them? No, the thing is, I, you know, because of COVID, I got the time. Okay. Now I don't even upload a video for six months or more. I mean, today okay. Shaji told me, and I told you, the Shaji was my idol once I was learning about Kadiani. Right, right. Uh, okay. he, his references used to come most frequently on the Google. He is everywhere in Google whenever you write Kadiani. MashaAllah. So... I he I don't actually do the bleak to them. I read it because they forced me, they did wanted to convert me and I thought I should read it. That's the fair thing to do. But the amazing thing is I've read more about Hinduism. I know the Vedas, I know Pranas, I know Upanishad, as good as I know Gadiani books, and I've read all the Old Testament and New Testament. Yes. Just uh, out of interest, I've read these books. Yes, yes. And yes. Uh, I don't do the belief to convert them honestly. Yeah. 
I just tell them the truth that they are betrayed by a person or a group of people who want to collect their money. You know, it is very, I mean, to talk about Qadiani, it's a very huge topic, honestly. And yeah, yeah, they were, they were support, he was supported by the British and uh, there's a financial incentive to being a Qadiani. Oh, you are absolutely right there because, uh, you know, in Risala al Wasiyat. Yeah. One of its condition was that to be a Muslim, he'll be faithful to a kafir. Right. Mm. You see, he said, he, you cannot be Qadiani unless you are faithful to Angrezi government. Yes, yes. Didn't he, in his writing, praise the queen? Of course, I'll tell you. No, look, he called God a thief. Do you know that? Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah. And he called God a tindwa, an animal with many arms. Astaghfirullah. I have got those references. And, Allah. you know, he wrote a letter to the Queen Victoria that you are the light of the heavens and earth. Noor. And I take a light from your light. He said, I take a noor from your noor. Subhanallah. <laughs> no, Subhanallah. From Victoria. And you mean? In Quran, yeah. in Quran yes. Allah says, Allahu Nuru Samawati. Yes. Allahu Nuru Samawati. Well, Nuru, Nurun Allah Nur. You know, Subhanallah, uh, he's praising one of the most brutal uh, colonial empires ever to exist in human history. Now, the, you see, I, like Shaji, I try to stay on the facts which we could prove about them. No, no, I'm saying the British... No, 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 uh, he placed the British yeah. government huge lot more. I have got at least 300 references from Mirza. Yes. yes. Uh, about him and their interaction with them. Actually, yes. uh, one reference he said to them, and I can show you that reference. He said that the woman in India are dirty. They are not good prostitutes. So for yes. British people, you should import prostitutes from Europe. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. I can show again, you the reference. Again, he's talking about prostitutes. No, no. You see, he wanted to marry 14-year-old girl, Mohamdi Beg. Yeah. He said, and he said his wedding with Mamdi Begum has been done in heaven, like uh, Hazrat Zainab Razi Alanhar's wedding with Prophet, right? Yes, yes, yes. And he said that his, he to be wed with Mamdi Begum is like Takdeer uh, Mubram. Mubram. Takdeer Mubram in Islam is that which cannot be changed. Yeah. And Mirza's own definition in Al Hakam Akbar is that Dire Mabram is that if all the prophets of the world who ever came come back again and pray together to change yes. that thing, it will not change. And what that thing was, he'll be wedded to Mamdi Beg. Yes. He his, never his, it was a, wedded. It him. was a prophecy, yes. It was his prophecy. He yes. never got wedded to Muhammadi Begum. He died in 1908. Muhammadi Begum died in 1949 or 48 or 60s sometime. <laughs> and her husband died 40 years after Mirza. And his prophecy was the both Muhammadi Begum and husband will die very soon if she didn't, didn't get wedded to him. If he doesn't I mean, marry them. Yeah. The Qadianis, I don't know why Qadiani believe in Qadianis. If you tell them, I mean, if you show them the reference and if you tell them that's the fact, it's very, very difficult to... Yeah, anybody who's, rush, who's rational and sincere will, will see, Yani, see, this is a ridiculous uh, uh, religion, you know, subhanAllah. But, you know, a human being is a complex. It, it, there's loyalty in terms of, you know, be like the Quraysh... No, no, it's said, not the loyalty. I no, no, like the, like the Quraysh said that my our forefathers used to worship idols. How can we leave this? So there's like an emotional 
connection to their forefathers. The other thing is there's also financial incentive, clear financial incentive. You, no, no, there is no financial incentive. Really? What financial incentive? Tell me. You know, financial incentive in terms of like being able to go to different countries around the world in Europe, getting visas like easily, getting, you know. Yeah, okay, uh, that is acceptable. That's true. Yeah. Yes. And but the thing is, emotional connection is very true as well. You yeah, know, of course. Yeah. If you tell a Kadiani who is a devout Kadiani and hasn't got any friction with the center, yeah, they won't even listen to you. Exactly, exactly. You tell them, I'm showing you your prophet's writing. They said, we don't want to see it. We don't want to see it, yes. So that, that's the situation anyway. Yeah. It's, it's very nice to talk to you. Jazakallah khairan. Yeah. And I think, Bashir, are you around? I think we'll finish now. I think we've, we've been going, mashallah, almost four hours. Bashir's sleeping. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's getting late. Subhanallah. It's, it's almost Fajr time here in Qatar anyway. So, um... yeah, so, so brother, I, I recommend you do the last uh, two minutes alone. Me and okay. his brother can leave and let's see who shows up. If they show up, you're stuck with them. If they're not going to show up and then that, you know, that that'll be the best segue. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, I'm in the Fact Check blog. Check out the blog. I'm around. Find me on Twitter. All of that. Yeah. And assalamu alaikum and peace out. Wa alaikum assalam. Thank you very much for inviting me. Thank you. Jazakallah khair. Inshallah, we'll plan some more uh, uh, podcasts together. Inshallah. Inshallah. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum. Okay, uh, brothers and sisters, Jazakallah khairan. That was a very uh, beneficial stream, Inshallah, where we just to summarize, we looked at mental illness, mental disorders, specifically psychosis and schizophrenia. What are the symptoms like delusions, hallucinations, um, and positive, negative symptoms, etc. And then we made, uh, we gave references directly from Mirza's work, which demonstrated that he had delusions, uh, suffered hallucinations, uh, and other physical health problems. So in conclusion, I think it's clear uh, that he did suffer from mental disorder. Um, whatever we did correctly is from Allah and whatever errors we made is from ourselves. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of you. Um, subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik ashadu wa la ilaha ilaha anta astaghfiratu wa alaik. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you find it beneficial and inshallah until next time this is your brother Dr. Abu Isa. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.